here. And Dennis Bender is out. Um, Mrs. Buchanan, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes. Right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kelly, do we have any public comments pertaining to closed session? We do not. Okay. We need to go into closed session to discuss the following. Pupil personnel expulsion case number 122324 through expulsion case um, 1423 to 24. Conference on litigation, 10 cases. Government code section 54956A, current litigation. CIVDS 19071722011183 and 20222956. CIVSB 21113 or 3221863 2217026 2227023 2304 865-231473 and 2322171. Government Code Sections 54954.5 subsection C and 54956.6 subsection D, subsection D and subsection E, subsection 1. Anticipated litigation, one case, 2021-2021-05. Public employees, discipline, dismissal, release, reassignment, transfer, leave, title, certificated and classified employee. Public employees, appointment, resignation, retirement, reduction, title, certificated and classified employees. Number five, conference with labor negotiator, agency negotiator, Dustin Conrad, employee organization, Apple Valley Unified Teachers Association. Conference with Labor Negotiator, Agency Negotiator, Dustin Conrad, Employee Organization, California School Employees Association. Conference with Real Property Negotiator, Government Code 549-56.8, Negotiating Parties, Matthew Schulenberg, Apple Valley Unified School. Security Matters, Government Code Section 54957, Consultation with Apple Valley Unified School District Chief of Police. Superintendent evaluation, and I ask for a motion to go into closed session. So moved. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We head to close.
Good evening. This mic. Calling the meeting to order. Roll call. Mr. Uh, Raleigh. I'm here. Mr. Garc uh, uh, Arce. Here. Mrs. Amanda. Here. Mrs. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Benda is We're out, and I'm Maria Okpara. Uh, Frank, will you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here. Before we get started, I would like to say that the board appreciates and supports uh, educational partners' input at our meetings. Engagement by members of the public and civic, ma and civic matters is the cornerstone of our democracy. Everyone should have a chance to express their opinions within the guidelines the board has established for its meetings so that we are able to conduct the meeting effectively and efficiently. During the meeting, there will be time for the public to comment on matter not on the agenda. In addition, members of the public may comment on specific agenda items after I, as your board president, ask for public comments on an item. Until it is your turn to speak, or if you are here just to observe the meeting, please refrain from any behavior that prevents others from participating in the meeting or that disrupts the board's ability to conduct the business of the board. Once again, thank you very much for taking your time to join us this evening and to be a participant in this duty of serving our students and our educational community. We will now begin with the student report. Desert Knowles Elementary School, Mina Kalisha and Edward Rudak. Good evening, board members, cabinet, and members of the public. I'm Edward Ruddick, and this is Mina Kalshe. We are sixth grade, sixth grade students at Desert Knowles Elementary School. We are here to tell you about some things we are doing at Ele Desert Knowles Elementary School this year. This is my third year in student council, and I'm so excited to be representing the school. The student council and booster club have been working hard to keep us excited about coming to school. In October, we are we were busy with Spirit Days for Red Ribbon Week, and ended with our very first truck or tr or tr trunk or treat, which we are hoping is the start of a new tradition. It was so much fun seeing all the students and parents, as well dressed in in their costumes. In December, we had another Spirit Week, and our TK classes had a cr Christmas concert. We participated in Kindness Week, where we had a Spirit Day for. Each day and every grade level contributed to kindness around our campus. This, this week, we are participating in Read Across America, where we have spirit days every day as well. In class, we have been working hard to build our stam stamina <laughs> sorry, and use strategies to solve real-world real problems. We are improving our reading skills as we learn, around, learn about the world around us and investigate the science of the world we live in. Most importantly, we are working on being part of our school community and showing respect and consideration for others. Thank you for your time and all you do to help our school. Have a great night. Um, the things we are passing out, um, student council made for you guys. <laughs> so we thought. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
I love the pictures. Oh, Thank okay. you very much. It's like getting a donut. Uh, Mr. Conrad's really excited about this because he loves succulents. He's probably the only one up here that can figure out how to save it. <laughs> that was Kylie Thank doing this so up much. here. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Sandia Academy, Trevor Quick, and Elian Rodriguez. Good evening, good evening, members of the school board, school district, office, faculty, parents, and fellow students. As we gather here today, we are deeply honored to stand before you as members of our student body at Sandia Academy. My name is Trevor Quick. And my name is Eliana Rodriguez Correva. We are honored to serve as the voice of our school. We are here to share highlights of all the great things that students at Sandia have accomplished experienced and enjoyed so far this year we would we would have to, sorry we would have loved to fill this space with all of our peers to share this experience but we know that could not have been achieved with the time and space we have so instead we have a short we have a short video highlighting all the great things good evening everyone I'm David Alcala, the ASB advisor at Sandy Academy, and I'm thrilled to be starting this video out with you all. Sandy Academy is filled with incredible students and dedicated staff members, and I'm proud to be a part of it. Our students and staff consistently show their dedication to excellence, and it is an honor to work alongside them. Together, we're focused on creating a positive and inclusive environment where everyone can succeed. Thank you for having us here today, and here are some of our student highlights so far this year. My name is Amaya Rose Tambo. My, and my favorite thing was the 100 days of vacation rotations because it was fun. My name is Aaliyah Sanchez Mesa, and I am in first grade. And my favorite thing is year was our field trip to Town Hall in Apple Valley. It was my favorite because I got to see fighter fighters and police cars and I learned about community jobs. Hi, I'm Dexter and I am in second grade. My favorite thing this year is going to pause because I love performing. Hi, I am Callie and I am in second grade. My favorite thing this year was going to the Apple Valley Science Innovation Center because we got to learn about science. Hi, I'm Leslie, I'm in third grade. My favorite thing is the Spirit Weeks, but my favorite Spirit Week is the Halloween Parade because I liked everyone's costumes. Hi, I'm Heath, and I'm in the fourth grade, and I'm excited for the Calico Field trip coming up because I've never been to a ghost town. Hello, my name is Chase Lombard, and I'm in the fifth grade, and the my favorite field trip is the Sawdust Factory because we get to paint, we get to do picture frames, the food is good, I just really liked it. My name is Linnea and I am in sixth grade. My favorite things that have happened in sixth grade are the Pally trip because of all the fun activities and the memorable moments that I will cherish forever. My next favorite thing in sixth grade was the Science Museum in LA. It was fascinating to see everything. My next favorite thing were the dances. Our ASB representatives do a great job setting up the whole thing and also making sure everyone has a great time. My last and final favorite thing to do in sixth grade are the plays. Every school year, our sixth grade does 
our school does plays for the fourth through eighth grade to do. For example, last year was The Little Mermaid, while this year is, the, is Lion King. And because I'm such a theater nerd, I enjoy being in these plays every year. Hi, my name is Winnie, and I've, I'm, in, I'm in the seventh grade, and I've been in ag for eight years. My favorite part about ag is when I win at the San Bernardino County Fair, and I usually get first place. Uh, last year, I got first place when I showed my chicken Onyx. Um, I showed her in kindergarten, so I also got first place. Uh, hi, my name is Jeremiah Garcia. I'm in the seventh grade. My favorite thing about this year was Poly Mountain because of the tree climbing and the mountain hiking. It was a fun experience. Hi, I'm Isaac. I'm in the seventh grade. And my favorite thing this school year is being able to perform in the honor bands at Oak Hills because I can play in front of a bunch of people. Hi, my name is Damien. I'm an eighth grader. One of my favorite things was to, to go to iFly. I was on the basketball team, the volleyball team. It was fun. And um, I participated in ASB camp. Um, I was a teacher's aide. Um, yeah, and I like Spirit Week because I got to come to school as Spider Man. Hi, I'm Avery. I'm a senior at Alpha Valley High School, and I work here at Sandy in the Shadow Pack. Um, it is my second year, and I'm now like seen as a leader. Um, I absolutely love this experience. I get to teach the kids math in this program called Math Pack, where they get challenging problems. I love the relationships I've built, all the kids I get to teach, the work experience with the office, the other adults, and overall, it's just a good program to be in. As I said, you know, this is how we have help to be safe, offer respect, work responsibly, and lead by example. Again, we want to express our gratitude for the opportunity to present at the board today. It has been an honor to show you a glimpse of all the great things going on at Sandia. Thank you for your time and attention. Have a great night. And we put you guys' goodie bags on the table. Oh, is that them? They're the ones that give us this cute stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, High Desert Premier Ishmael Solis. Okay. You? It's good. Thank you for the thing. Uh, well, anyways, my sister's probably watching. I don't know where the camera is or wherever it is, but <laughs> oh well, yeah, my sister's probably watching, so she's probably gonna make fun of me later if I mess up. But it's all right. Uh, good evening, President Okpara, board members, Superintendent Nelson, and Executive Cabinet. Last week, Superintendent Nelson and Assistant Superintendent Schlosser came to speak with our student advisory team. I'm so sorry I was not able to be there with you guys. I heard the meeting went well and the students were able to talk to Mrs. Smith and Ms. Garcia about bettering our school. I'm looking forward to seeing what changes are made before the year ends. I hope to see you more colors really soon. Last week, we also had visitors from Apple Valley High School and the district nurses to train a group of students with Stop the Bleed. 23 students will receive Stop the Bleed certificates. Good job to everyone who got one. This month, our students went to several places to learn through experience. Some of our history students went to the Museum of Tolerance to get a better understanding about what happened during the Holocaust. I'm pretty sure Mr. Holgriff took him right there. He's right there, but pretty sure he took him to there. Uh, our counselor, Mr. Gaithan, took students to Victor Valley College so they could get a better look at the college's programs, such as nursing, construction, and welding programs. We also took a group of students to check out local companies from the Victor Valley area at the fairgrounds. Students were able to check out the job fair that Victorville Motors hosted and check out companies such as Avionics, fire, the fire department, Victor Valley Transit, Chick-fil-A, Aerospace, and Jack in the Box. They were also able to participate in workshops that were provided to learn how to, that were provided to learn how to complete applications and interviews. 
Next week, our middle school program will attend the Secure the Bag Youth Conference at Victor Valley College. BAG stands for Behavior, Attendance, Grades, and it's hosted by Young Visionaries in the County of San Bernardino, where they will work with the Canyon Brothers, Gabriel and Javon. These groups will complete workshops for mental health awareness, conflict resolution, and building healthy relationships. A few club updates that we have are eSports. They entered Apex Legends and Super Smash Bros. tournaments. Our golf club is meeting at Apple Valley Country Club to learn how to play. I hope you all had a great spring break and a well-deserved break. I'm looking forward to seeing you all next month and talk more about our school owls. Have a great rest of your night, everybody. Thank you, Ismail. Granite Hills High School, Hannah Forger. Good evening, Executive Cabinet, Board Members, and Attendees. My name is Hannah Forger, the Junior Class President in Granite, and I have a lot of wonderful things to tell you about tonight. Last Sunday, our AVID held their first annual Thrift Madness event at our school. There was everything from food vendors, free clothes and pajamas from the Family Center, clothes and items being sold by AVID, ASB, Swab, Creative Crafts, Peer Helpers, and a lot more as well as a ton of community vendors selling items from purses to jewelry to small student-owned bu- small student owned businesses selling personally designed um, clothing brands. I really hope at least some of you had a chance to attend. It was an incredible turnout, and we are really excited to see how this event will grow in the years to come. AVID also held a field trip for freshmen in the program. They toured Cal State Fullerton and Cal Poly Pomona. At both schools, AVID was able to have tour guides who are Grand Hills alumni as well as past AVID students. As for ASB, we've been very busy. Two weekends ago, we held our winter formal dance at night in New York. We had photo booths, a dancing robot, food trucks, snacks, and a great DJ. For a Valentine's Day fundraiser, ASB sold roses at lunch with handwritten notes for our loved ones. This Wednesday, we held our info meeting for students interested in joining ASB or running for a class office. Currently, ASB is working hard and getting ready for a winter pep rally, which will take place tomorrow morning. Last week, we celebrated our beloved Mrs. Hall and the 10-year anniversary of the Granite Hills Family Center. Staff participated in a week-long food drive, spirit days, and family center trivia giveaways. It was a fun-filled week with being able to recognize all that our family center does for us on our campus. Also last week, students met with Superintendent Nelson and Assistant Superintendent Schlosser on the Student Advisory Council Meeting of the Year. Students were able to give input on ways to make Granite Hills even better and worked with administrators and teachers to record those ideas. We look forward to seeing the positive change the opportunity brings in the future. I was a part of this group, and I think it was extremely helpful to not only staff, but to us as students. We were able to hear a lot about other, a wider range of variety of things happening on our campus and how we can help to advocate for ourselves and others. And we look forward to next year. Our CTE programs have been busy with competitions and Skills USA prep. Our medical pathway took first place overall at the MDCP medical competition last week. And our skater program participated in Physics Day at Knott's Berry Farm. Our programs will be sending over 36 students to compete at Skills at State and Skills USA next month. Our dance classes got to go on a Disney trip on Tuesday for a dance workshop and leadership event. Theater is working very hard and getting ready to perform Mean Girls the Musical, and it'll be fetched, so make sure you guys come out. I'll, give, I'll, I'll have more updates on the dates for that for you guys next month. And as a member of the cast, I can very confidently say it will be an incredible show. Some of our performing arts students will be attending the CCLL Statewide Grid Summit in LA on March 14th. This is a California-based initiative. The grid introduces young people to new ways of thinking about creativity, problem-solving skills, and career pathways. There will be professional workshops and statewide competitions for the students. Next week will be a busy one at Granite Hills as we race into spring break. We're hosting the eighth grade visits on Monday and Tuesday where students will get to preview CTE programs, electives, and get a glimpse of their future high school experience. Wednesday is high school awareness night for parents and families to see all that Granite has to offer incoming freshmen. And Thursday we'll host District Field Day as part of our special Olympics Unified Champion School Collaborative. Students from both Apple Valley High School and Granite Hills will partner with 252 students with special needs from preschool to adult transition to participate in a day of games and activities that showcases all of our district's values in a single event. We hope that you can join us for all the fun. As for Granite Hills Athletics, all of our programs are thriving. I don't have a very detailed update for you tonight, but I will next month, I promise. But for now, that's it. So as always, thank you for your support and Moon and Gray lead the way. Apple Valley High School, Sophia Brunt. (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) 
Good evening, members of the board and attendees. My name is Sophia Brandt, and I'm the Apple Valley High School Associated Student Body Line President. Today, I'll be sharing with you what our students have been up to, as well as some of our goals for the upcoming month. For the first time in program history, our girls' soccer team moved on to CIF Division III finals and won the title. We are so incredibly proud of our girls and let them know with two pep rallies and a special send-off from some of our elective classes. They then won their first round of regionals, and afterwards we put on a parade around the school to celebrate those talented CIF champs. Girls basketball also played in the first round of CIF earlier this month, and Jalen Serna and Tyler Mulford competed in the individual CIF wrestling championship. We are so proud of our talented Sun Devil athletes. Apple Valley Unified School District is part of NDC. MDCP, Mountain Desert Career Pathways, a collaboration of districts to help enhance CTE education, and they hosted many competitions our students competed in the last month, including for medical, construction, welding, and the hackathon, which we were able to host at ABHS. Our construction team won third place, and welding had the highest scores as a team and the highest scoring individual, Jacob Lawler, who is also a Sun Devil. Speaking of CTE programs, we have 167 students who are advancing to state competitions for Skills USA across 46 different competitions. There were also many top three regional placements with 39 gold, 41 silver, and 19 bronze medals earned. We can't wait to see how state goes. Continuing to prep our Sun Devils for life after high school, colleges like Cal State Bakersfield, Cal State San Bernardino, Cal Baptist University, Northern Arizona University, Azusa Pacific, VVC, and Park University, as well as representatives from the Army, Navy, Marines, and Air Force, and local businesses like Starbucks, The Gym, and more came to talk to our students at our college and career fair to inspire their futures. Our ASB Disney trip was a great time, and we gained insight on how leadership and teamwork intersect with our everyday work on campus. For Valentine's Day, freshmen sold and distributed Valentine's grams, and one of our weekly challenge groups gave students the opportunity to make free Valentine's cards at lunch. We put on the Buff and Tough volleyball game where junior and senior boys competed against each other and were coached by our volleyball girls. But sadly for me, as a class of 2024 student, the juniors won. <laughs> Tomorrow, we will have a St. Patrick's Day celebration since it falls on spring break this year. And for the only time during the entire school year, we're encouraging our Sun Devils to wear green. <sighs> ASV will also be guides at incoming, as incoming eighth graders from middle schools come and tour AVHS and learn about the wide range of programs and activities we have to offer on Monday and Tuesday. And then we'll be hosting our um, high school awareness night on Wednesday. Lion has been working hard on Mr. Sandoval preparations, and it's finally the month of the show. With the help of camp, we filmed an amazing promotional video that you can find on our Instagram. I've been teaching the five boys their opening routine of a mix of country songs. And right now, um, it's looking a bit interesting, but they're working very hard. So on Friday, it'll look good. I'm confident. Um, and our whole class has been painting huge backdrops to set the stage of a Western town. We've collected sponsors for many incredible local businesses, and we will have our setup and run through next Thursday before the show on Friday. It will be held in the gym starting at 6 p.m., and I would highly recommend coming to watch and vote for this year's winner. Over spring break, some of the Spanish students, including myself, are traveling to Costa Rica to learn about the rich culture and practice the language. I'm so grateful to the Spanish department and AVHS as a whole for providing other students and me with the opportunity to travel abroad and gain first-hand experience while we are still in high school. There are so many exciting things happening at Apple Valley High School, and I want to thank you all for your continued support. We couldn't give our students any of these incredible opportunities without you. I hope you all enjoy your spring break, our last one before the home stretch, and thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of the student speakers. Um, I think I need to switch this around. So um, I'm looking at making some changes on the agenda, on the agenda. So I wanted the students to see the presentation that is coming after this. Um, so I'm not going to release the students at as yet. Um, do you want to we'll move? Work. Do you want to move the presentations right yes, now, so the, and so then the we'll students. do our comments? Yes. Okay. Let's do that. So can we amend that? Can, is that okay yes. with the board to mm -hmm. bring the recognitions yes. forward? Mm -hmm. We're still going to do our comments before. We are. Right? Yes, yes, we are. That's, yeah. That's not going well. Okay. I need my computer. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have the board and I need the phone.
Yes, Mr. Schoenberg. <laughs> I was waiting for him to get the steps to report him, and I was going to say, no, he's not allowed. Right here. Right if I, yes. Yeah. I think Jamie is in the audience. Is Jamie here? Jamie, how did I miss you? I know this is not what you like. Right? Right? That's why, because you're always standing someplace in the room. You're never seated. That's what I'm going to say about you. Um, Jamie Kateris is a custodian up at Sycamore Rock School. That's why the cheering section is here, and they should be. <laughs> well, I've been in the district for many years. What I always see Jamie doing is just being there, ready to do whatever is needed. And what I recognize about him is he is always valued as a partner at that school. Like if there's a staff meeting, Jamie's there. If there's a decision to be made, Jamie's there. But just like this, he's quiet <laughs> and behind the scenes. However, on a day last month, we had a student that choked in the multipurpose room. And Jamie didn't hesitate to step in and do the Heimlich maneuver and take care of that kiddo. And so I heard about it. I asked to see the video because there was a video in the room and I was just overwhelmed with emotion that this is what we do in schools. And I was so proud to say to the board that we are going to reinstitute our recognition of employees regarding our values of dignity, service, authenticity, and community by recognizing you as one of the first people in our district with that award. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm sure that parent and that child and everybody at your school are so proud of you. So thank you. And then if we, while we're waiting for this, can we have Natalie come up? Natalie Kahn? So a few weeks ago, Mr. Conrad and I received an email from a parent in our district who's also a staff member. And on the night of the event at the school right before Christmas, you were having a performance. <laughs> that one of her students was going to participate in. But unfortunately, he ended up in the emergency room and later was transported to Loma Linda, where again, the emotion of what these people do, um, and there's so many teachers in the audience, so this is so exciting for me because I know so many of you represent these same values. Natalie went down to the hospital, took her student some of his favorite things to do, and um, continued to stay in contact and make sure that everything was okay. And the parent just wanted us to know that not only are you a rock star, those were her words, but you also, I'm gonna, I, I need to go there for a minute. Um, you also provide just calm and um, gentle support to your students that allow him to thrive in your class. And so again, what a representation of Apple Valley Unified School District's value of dignity, authenticity, community, and service. So we appreciate you. Thank you. 
Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to go on. Uh, superintendent's comments. Since our last board meeting, we held our first African American um, parent advisory, district advisory meeting. Um, our and our district LCAP L advisory meeting, which is our um, DAC community um, group. And then we ha continue our work with our ethnic studies committee. Um, we have met three times. We'll meet the fourth time next week. Um, yesterday, I sat on the San Bernardino County Student Advisory Panel. Students from across the high desert presented solutions in response to the San Bernardino County Vital Signs mm -hmm. Initiative. Several of the presentations were related to access of medical care, health services, mental health, and um, the relationship that, that not having those provided um, add to the drug abuse in our community. The presentations were well-planned and thoughtful. It was interesting to be on the panel I was on because the same week we had had um, a community night regarding suicide prevention. And while the group that came to, to see the presentation was very small, um, the information that Stan Collins provided as the presenter um, is something that we will continue to offer to our community. We're looking at a different um, venue because we know that talking about suicide is a hard topic. And yet we know that based on the kids' presentations yesterday, it's a, a needed topic. And so we'll encourage our families to um, log in when we offer it and um, know what the, the information is so that we can stop people from not talking about it if they need help. The kids talked about the, AV, the ABSD superintendent advisory that has been going on. Hannah spoke of it. Ishmael spoke of it. We have Apple Valley next week. Um, Trevor's in the room. Uh, Mina, Mia's in the room. Mina's in the room. Um, and they have participated in student advisory. Has Trevor left? I don't see you, Trevor. Trevor is one of our students that um, participates in the elementary student advisory. And he's one of these kids that um, right off the bat in our advisory, we knew that he was a servant leader. Um, whenever there is anything going on in the room that creates any waste, Trevor gets up and goes and gets a trash can and starts walking around and collecting these things. And that happened the first advisory. It happened the second advisory. And during the second advisory, other students asked if they could do the same thing. And so I just want to recognize him in this room of, um, along with all of his peers and others that um, that doesn't go unnoticed. It's not because we're doing it in our school district. It's because he learned this at home. And so wherever your, your group is that's here to cheer for you, um, good job, guys. And Trevor, I'm glad that um, Elian is here because I think he's going to replace you. Right. <laughs> when you're when you're too old to come to advisory for K-8, I think he'll probably replace you. So um, just so you know. Uh, good job, you guys. All of the speakers were amazing. Gra congratulations to um, the ABHS Sun Devil Girls Varsity Soccer Team, Coach Nicole Stevens and Assistant Coach Daniel Terrazzo, um, who took the CIF Division Three, as we heard from um, Sophia, Mr. Nelson and I went on a date night to Oak Park to watch history being made. It was a two and a half hour drive, but it was well worth the drive. Um, they moved on to this California Southern section regionals and played in the finals last weekend in Granada Hills, where they ended their season after extra time and then went to a penalty kick um, round. I think the quote in the paper by Ca uh, Cadence, honestly, it might, her quote was, honestly, it might sound bad, but I'm not sad. I'm so proud of this team represents the heart and resilience of the team. Um, I think it was, I think that it is awesome that in a month recognized as women's history, that we have a female team take a CIF championship led by a female coach. With a female athletic director. <laughs> and cheering them on from the stands were two of our female board members and the female superintendent. Mr. Nelson took me on another date. He drove to Granada Hills. I also um, was sad to miss hackathon and the welding and constructions trades and automotive competitions because I don't miss those. 
but I was on a board meeting um, for one of our JPAs and was not able to attend. But I did watch for um, the results and was thrilled to see that um, another one of our student advisors, Jacob Lahr, um, was the advanced welder and um, Apple Valley took the overall welding. Uh, and again, an all girl, all female constructions trades group took third place in the overall competition. Um, I also um, loved going over to Granny Hills High School to um, celebrate the 10 year anniversary of the Family Center and um, Zyra Hall. Um, they surprised her with quite a little party um, that some of the students had planned. I was able to participate and read across America at two school sites, nothing like being tongue tied and now have a group of fourth graders at DK in Mrs. Brandt's class who think that I should be able to wrap the cat in the hat. <laughs> So when the challenge is made, I told them I have absolutely no rhythm. I definitely can't rap, but I'm up for the challenge. So before the end of the year, Zoe says she'll go with me. Kylie doesn't know she's going as the other thing because Zoe says she's going to be thing one. Kylie can be thing two. And I'm going to wrap the cat in the hat. There will not be video of this event. <laughs> Spring break is around the corner, and I knew that the students and staff are all ready from, for some rest as we turn the corner in preparation and of another school year end. So I hope everybody takes that time and relaxes. Thank you. Mrs. Buchanan. Thank you. <clears throat> um, first to all of the students, thank you so much for coming. Um, you, you guys did fantastic like you always do. Um, I did have a question for Hannah. When did you say Mean Girls was? I didn't see it on our calendar. Um, April. Oh, that's why. <laughs> April, do you know? Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna write it down, April. Someday, in April. Okay. I will. It's. I, I wrote April. <laughs> I, I I caught that part. I just missed the April. You were you were moving faster than my brain was tonight. All right. Um, so I did. Um, I made it out to Vanguard this month. I got to see some of the middle school boys basketball games. Um, I timed it so I actually got three of the schools, two games. Um, so it was Vanguard versus Sitting Bull first, and then Sitting Bull and Mariana. So that was kind of neat. I got to see a little bit of um, of those three schools, two games for the boys. Um, I also had the opportunity to read for Read Across America, um, which was really nice. Um, as you guys know, I'm a, I, I get to teach the bigger kids. So I got to take the morning off, took some uh, personal necessity time and came over here and got to read just the littles. Um, and it was just, it was so enjoyable because uh, I went back to work and I worked my whole day. And then I came in on Monday and our security guard came in and said, I have to show you something. And he pulls out his phone and he says, my wife sent this to me and I needed to show you like our grandson left something in um, our car this weekend. And it was a little note that I had written to each of the kids just saying like, thank you so much for letting me read to your class. And it just so turned out that the one class at the one school that I randomly got assigned happened to have um, a grandson in it from the school where I actually work as well. So it was really neat. It was like all came full circle. Um, Congratulations to the Apple Valley High School girls team. Uh, we, we did get a chance to make it out there, as was mentioned. Um, I wish I had known about some of the previous games um, before they had actually been played. We, we were getting the scores afterwards when they were winning, and we would get the, yay, they won, it's so great. And so we were, um, as board members, celebrating that <clears throat> after the fact. But we did know about that last game, so we made sure we – um, got out there to support them. And, um, you know, they just, it may not have ended the way they had hoped, but we are so dang proud of them um, as a board, all of us, because it was just, it was phenomenal how far they did make it. And it was a nail biter. Um, when we got home, um, 
I was the driver and everybody else in the car was asleep. But the next morning, my 13 year old daughter, who is a goalie um, for rec soccer, could not stop telling her dad all about the, the goalies um, for Apple Valley. So if you know them, make sure you tell them. She could not stop talking about them. Um, and then just the last thing, um, I know one of the students mentioned it in the video, but um, congratulations to all of the, the students that made it into the county honor band and performed, because I know I did um, see that also um, on the video, but then also show up on, on social media. So just congratulations to all of our musicians in the district. Uh, sometimes they get a little bit overlooked too with all the sports. And so that's fantastic that we had I think it was, was it 26, 27 students? Do you know off the top of your head? Do you remember? I know it was a lot that made it into the county honor band, which it is competitive because I don't like to talk about it, but when I was in middle school or high school, I auditioned twice to make it and I never made it. So <laughs> I tried. It's hard. Yeah, I never made it, but congratulations to them. So <laughs> that's it for me. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Arce? Thank you. I'd just like to, to add what, uh, to what Superintendent Nelson mentioned about the uh, student advisory panel that a number of us were able to participate in. And then I uh, just wanted to, to inform the public of, of what was going on there. And the purpose of that was uh, student presentations to gain valuable insight from a student's per perspective on uh, priorities identified. Uh, you know, what, in, in other words, it was leaders, it was um, board members, it was superintendents, it was community leaders hearing from the students. And uh, the, the purpose of it is to uh, focus students on uh, empowering their voice and encouraging civic engagement. And I think all of us who were there can say that we were so impressed with, with the students, uh, with their presentations, with the, th the thoughts that they shared. They, were, they spent months preparing for the presentations uh, that, that they gave us. And uh, we were very, very impressed. And I just, just want to recognize the students from, from Apple Valley High School who participated in that. It was Audrey Garibay, Caden Holloway, Samantha Jimenez Regard, uh, Rodriguez, Nelly Gonzalez de la Rosa, Faith Rohrbar, Khadija Mido, uh, Effie Avila, Tiffany Ho Ching Johnson, Nick Jung, and Colt Nelson. <laughs> Uh, just just uh, outstanding uh, student presentation. And like I say, we were we were so impressed uh, with with uh, how our Apple Valley High School students uh, did. And uh, they, they represented our, our district exceedingly well. So so thank you for all the students who worked so hard on that. Uh, I had the chance the last month to, to visit the uh, Apple Valley Center for Innovation. And I saw the, the, the Vanguard uh, sixth graders taking a field trip there. And I just want to, to commend Mr. Gillette and all the staff there for the, the tremendous knowledge that they shared with the students. Uh, they, they were sharing information on planets and stars and uh, galaxies and constellations. The students were engaged in uh, team building exercises, critical thinking exercises. And I could tell uh, just by looking at the students, just, just by, by sitting on the ground next to them as we were in that inflatable planetarium and all, the, all this, this great uh, information was being shared, I could just tell that the, the expertise and enthusiasm on, on the staff really made a big difference. So thank you for all the, the, the people at AVCI, Dr. Gillette and all your staff were working so hard every single day. Uh, very, very impressive uh, presentation. Uh, as, as was mentioned, as um, Sophia mentioned, just want to compliment uh, and congratulate all who worked so hard on the, the college fair, uh, college and career fair there at uh, AVHS. Uh, as she mentioned, 52 exhibitors participated, including uh, representatives from, from our local town, uh, the U.S. military, um, local employers, uh, AV fire department, a number of colleges and so on. Uh, there, were, there was a very good participation on the basis of our students. And I know our students, a lot of them had their eyes opened as to the opportunities that are available to them. So thank you for everyone who organized that. And thank you for all the teachers uh, who brought their classes over. And I also want to commend Mrs. Pratt at, at Apple Valley High School for the extend, extend, uh, outstanding work that the CTE program is doing there. I uh, had the chance to, to visit with her uh, last month and she gave me a tour of the uh, engineering tech classes, the graphics design classes, animal science and ag, uh, media arts, machining and welding, medical pathways, construction, food service. Uh, just just uh, so impressive what our teachers are, are doing and how they're motivating our students to excel in such a way. Uh, I, I learned 
that 79% of the students enrolled in CTE programs at Apple Valley High earn official industry certifications in things such as, and I, know, I know those tangible job skills in things like a welding, um, EKG analysis, and so on. So our, our students are being prepped and are graduating with real world job skills that they can immediately translate into jobs. Uh, so I want to say a big thank you to Mrs. Peratt and all the CTE staff at uh, Apple Valley High School for all their hard work um, and all their constant grant writing. Uh, you know, a lot of times we don't see all the hard work that goes on behind the scenes, uh, writing grants on their own time, uh, coming in on the weekends. You know, the, the ag folks come in on the weekends. Uh, their pigs still got to eat. Their uh, chickens and cows still have to eat. So they're, they're working seven days a week there on campus. And I want to say a special thank you to the food service class because they allowed me to sample their chocolate chip cookies that just came out of the out of the oven and I just just want to inform the food service uh, class that that in the future if, if they ever need a volunteer taste tester I am I am more than happy to sacrifice my time and uh, and go over there and support your program so call me up I, I will anytime uh, day or night I will happily be a, a, a unofficial uh, food taster because you had students there do excellent work so so thank you very much for everything that you guys are all the teachers and the staff are doing on a regular basis. That's Thank all. you. Mr. Raleigh. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. I, um, I'd like to thank, uh, we, we had the presentation with Natalia and, and Jamie. Uh, <laughs> did I say it wrong? No, no, you're good. It's Natalie, but Maria knows it from a long time ago. Oh. So called Natalia. Okay, I've well, known her from grade school. Where is she so. at? Where is she? <laughs> Natalia. Natalia. She's over and, there. Oh, she's over there. There she is in the back there. <laughs> Well, I heard you say it. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is, uh, especially Jamie, you're going to find that, you know, when you save a person's life, especially a young person, it's going to stay with you forever, like a video. You know, you're going to replay this. And for that person that you saved that life of, they're going to remember you for the rest of their life. So it's very an honorable thing that you did. And so you should really um, be commended. And I know it's, you know, you don't consider yourself a hero. You just did what comes natural to you as a person. But um, that's pretty remarkable what you what you did at that school. So from uh, from me, I wanted to thank you because it's a very honorable thing. So um, that's all I have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I've got to start by thanking the students who came out today to speak to us uh, and to share all of the marvelous things happening at your schools. Um, it's not easy to uh, share uh, in front of all these people in one room. It's not like your classroom. But I'm really impressed with um, your presentation, your poise, um, and your presence. Um, it is such a great experience uh, to see you come in and, and give us a little nugget of what happens at your school. Um, thank you so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You are doing such a great job sharing. Um, Mrs. Buchanan and I went to see the CIF championship. As you all know, I'm from another country, so soccer is our world. Uh, and so that's where you go and you talk as if nobody's watching. Um, and so uh, I had to be reminded that I'm a board member. Watch your mouth. Um, um, but by your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed the speed with which those young girls ran across the field and how they tackled and they played very clean game, I must say, because I, I felt that the coach must have known the other team uh, and favored them somehow. Uh, but our kids stayed focused. Um, so I personally believe that they played with all of their heart, and they gave us a best, uh, best game so far. I'm hoping that next year we can up our game, and uh, and anybody that comes our way, we have them. Uh, thank you so much to Upper Valley High School. You did a great job um, representing us um, outside of here. Uh, we went to the civic engagement um, um, exercise at Hesperia School District. Uh, I must say that our students were very professional. Um, they were very well dressed. Their coaches did a fabulous job preparing them. And so when you put them on the stage and you see how they line up 
and you can almost think that those kids were going for a job interview, well-dressed, have poise, well-prepared, and I couldn't have asked for a better district to represent us, a better group of kids to represent us. They were amazing. Um, uh, we went to read across America at uh, Vanguard. I was truly honored uh, to uh, be invited to come and read to those kids. And, um, and I thought they will never understand me because of my accent. But those kids were so engaged. They participated. They let me pronounce words that didn't sound right, um, <laughs> but they didn't mind either. Uh, but of course, I was also teach, um, reading in a classroom of one of the teachers that I consider my daughter, Natalia. Uh, so it was easier to go into her classroom and actually pretend that I was actually back as a teacher. It was good. She get, live, left me a grandma chair, so it was really perfect. Um, and, and then I went to suicide prevention um, at Granite Hills. It was by far one of the best uh, experiences I've had. And I wish everybody would have gone to just see that, to hear um, some of the things that we ought to be aware of when we are dealing with uh, the young, young people and the attention we need to pay to, to the details. Uh, because sometimes you could miss a little, a little detail that could save a child's life. But I wish we would do this again and hopefully do it so that we will do it in an evening like this and maybe during board meeting and have them get a little snippets of it uh, because our children are worth saving. Um, whatever it is that is out there that can save them, um, I'm all for it. Um, and then to uh, conclude, um, I did not go to a lot of schools this year, um, this, this month because my life came tumbling down um, this, last, this, this, this last month. And so my strength has come from waking up every morning and thinking about every single one of the kids in the school district. And they gave me a reason to get up and go. Uh, and so um, I want to thank you again. And in terms of Skills USA, I am extremely proud of the kids who have, who have advanced um, we have um, probably about 75 um, medals um, that are 75, 79 medals. Um, some are group medals, so there will be more kids in that group uh, that won in Skills USA. Um, I went when they were doing the woodshop portion of it because I thought I could be could be my next career okay, for, to be able to do wood stuff because I tend to break things with wood. And I think I can repair it if I just know how to put the nail in the right spot. Um, but um, before I get off, I'm going to ask each and every one of you to please keep my family in your prayers. Because I have had the most tremendous loss this last week, this last month, uh, to lose th three members of my family in one day is a little too hard. But I thank all of you who have stepped up, stepped up and helped me <laughs> along. And you children are the reason I wake up every morning and want to be here. Thank you again. And then, and we are going to take this time to excuse the kids so that we may go on with the business of, of uh, running the district. Thank you so much. You guys can do your homework now. Yeah, probably do it. Yeah, no, I took it kind of more serious. <laughs> you're good, you're good. Next time I'll try to... Let me go and please see <laughs> Natalia. Oh, I was going to say, let me go and see Natalia. She came up. <laughs> What's that? Hello, baby girl. I'm going to get right back.
Just look at that. Let's give you a hug. Look at that. She looks like a mommy. She gave me a catalog and to buy a shoe. I bought Amy. Oh. And I got the shoe. <laughs> Okay, California School Employees Association, CSEA, Nicholas Garrett. Nope. Apple Valley Unified Teachers Association, ABUTA, Karen Sabers. I'm back. Okay. Oh, we're good. No, no we're not. I'm under Are you? Okay. <laughs> good evening, Superintendent Nelson, esteemed board members, cabinet, and distinguished audience. It is my pleasure to present to you tonight the newly appointed member board exec board members as well as reintroduce, re I can't even speak tonight, the returning members of our exec board. I'm filled with enthusiasm and pride as I showcase this exceptional group. Each member exemplifies integrity and professionalism, making our exec board a source of great confidence and pride. Leslie McNenley is our vice president. Treasure is now Amy Marks. <laughs> Secretary, Crystal Anderson. <laughs> PS6 Segment Director, Adrian Cloud. <laughs> PS8 Segment Director, still Wendy Kelly. <laughs> and High School Segment Director, Tim Holtgrief. The exec board members and negotiation team, well, half of our team, because we are now a whole team, not two separate teams, so half of our team, have embarked on a listening tour. Starting two weeks ago and continuing through May, representatives from both teams are visiting schools to listen to the concerns and gather insights on what the staff would like addressed in our upcoming negotiations next January. This approach aims to foster meaningful conversations ensure that all, and ensure that all voices are heard. Avuda is thrilled to announce our participation in the upcoming Children's Day event. Our teachers will be distributing books to the children, a, tradi a tradition we are proud to continue. Witnessing the joy on the students' faces as they select their preferred books brings us immense happiness. I had the opportunity to participate in the community school cohort training alongside the team in February. That was in Santa Clara, not Santa Clarita. <laughs> it was an enriching experience, and we re returned I I'm sorry. It's been a day. We returned energized and prepared to advance our planning efforts. Last week, we convened again to initiate the development of a presentation for all stakeholders. Orlando Acevedo, I hope I did, I hope I said that right. Acevedo, you know, thank you. Representing the town of Apple Valley provided valuable community insights. Working with this team continues to be a delight. 
I also had the opportunity to participate in the Read Across America at Vanguard. It was great to be back in a third grade classroom reading to those littles. Um, Vanguard coaches did an excellent job of organizing the event and their after school art teacher did an amazing job decorating with the student work and her own creations. I was very impressed with that. Finally, there's that daunting topic of health insurance. Both Avuda Exec Board and CSEA Exec Board have had the opportunity to hear a presentation from the High Desert Trust about the newly introduced plan referred to as Plan B. However, we still need to delve into Plan C. We aim to have our insurance arrangements finalized by the end of this month, beginning of April. I wasn't going to say anything, but I want to say that today was a day of closure and relief, but also a day of sadness. Um, but I want to thank everybody that has sent um, their encouraging messages and positive um, messages to me um, this evening and to our exec board. And we just appreciate everybody's support and what we had to go through. Um, we're glad it's finally come to an end. Um, but thank you for your time. Have a great spring break and a great evening. In solidarity, Karen. The clerk will read out any action taken in closed session. Yes, thank you. We had one item, which is item B3, public employee discipline, dismissal, release, assignment, transfer, leave, certificated and classified employees. On a motion by Raleigh, second by Opara, uh, we voted uh, four zero to uh, approve. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I need a motion. Yes, I, I thought I called that out. It was um, item. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, there is a number there. Okay, approve the non-reelection of the following uh, certificated probationary employee number 6190, identified by employee number, effective June 30th, 2024, and direct that the superintendent or her designee give written notice, therefore, thereof, as required by law. And then that was an, a motion by Raleigh, a second by Opara, and it was a unanimous vote. Four zero. Good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then we'll go to discussion information. Oh, no. oh we need to adopt the agenda. The board, the board may adopt the agenda as is or add and or pull items from the consent agenda for discussion and our action. I need a motion. I'll move the item. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, District English Learner Advisory Committee, DLAG, presented by Patrick Schlosser. As with the better presentations, I will not be presenting. This instead will be presented by the experts. Um, but I just wanted to take a moment to give thanks to the, our District English Language Advisory Committee who serve in the capacity, not just in what's listed in the item, to give advice for our English Learner Program. They do so much more. Um, this is a powerful group who participates in our district advisory process. They've been participants in the ethnic studies development process and really just anything that involves the good, the improvement of our, of our system for children, they're there for us. And so this um, is an opportunity to hear from them some of the things they put into place this year and to hear from uh, Mariana Torres, who I'll turn it over to, is kind of um, how they've been guiding our development of program this year. So Mariana will, will introduce her team. We'll make it work. I have a teacher voice anyways. It's all right. 
Hello, board uh, and everyone here. We just wanted to have a moment to not only present the progress for English learners in our district. I get the pleasure of um, working alongside an amazing group of people across the district that supports our English learners. And once a year, even though this is kind of by law that we have to do this thing, like, you know, yes, it's, it's the legal requirement, but it's also a wonderful opportunity to actually highlight all the awesome things that our kids, our parents, our community, and everyone here is doing to support our students. So, um, with that said, I will go through the legal part of it, and then we'll get to the cool part of it, where all of the, um, with, with all of the work that they have been doing, which has been incredible. So we want to talk about proficiency. We want to talk about uh, reclassifications. Reclassifications is when those students actually leave our program. I know that it's a very weird thing to think about, but we technically kick kids kid kids out of our program and and with good reason they're doing so well that they don't need to be in our program anymore so they get to be most of them emergent bilinguals and then go on to making sure that they get their seal of biliteracy so it's actually one of the coolest programs to be a part of so um we're going to be talking about right now we're serving across our district approximately any day of the week a few more, a few less, 1,542 students. And this year, um, they actually were, you know, I, I know I'm talking educational lingo, but we were green people. We were green. We have been working hard towards that green. And so it's really exciting. I, I know, like, I, I swear my husband looked at me and goes, why are you, like, screaming? And I'm like, we made green. <laughs> But um, with that said, we actually increased 8.3 percent, and um, in in diet words, um, that 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 was that was a, the first 20 pounds. It was amazing. It's awesome. So 46.4 um, percent uh, of our students either made one band or they maintain a four, and that is amazing. Um, they have been working so hard in making sure that they handle their business. And you're going to see it across last year, which was kind of a rough year. We were still trying to figure out. You got to remember, we're a year behind. So, so you guys got to stay with me, even though it's forensic science. Um, you know, we redesignated 69 students because, you know, coming back, having them in school and everything else. This year, so far, we have done 68 and we have 126 candidates that are pending finalization of their reclassification. They are, um, they are just doing everything that they need to do and then some. So it's, it's very, very proud. Just to give you an idea, because most people don't realize this, most of our students do not stay in our program. As a matter of fact, um, almost 38.4% to be exact, but really about 40% of our students actually leave us. And they leave us because they have all the things that they need to be successful without us. And, and that makes us proud. We still watch them for four years and make sure that they don't fall. But you know what? They, they're doing what they need to do. But 500 of those 1,500 students have only been in the, either in the California educational system or enrolled in school for three or less years. So, you know, every three years, about one third is brand new kiddos. So, so we want to make sure that we keep it that way. We are working with our LTELs, which are our long-term English learners, to make sure that we provide other supports to make sure that those gaps that they might have that might be, might be part of language development or they might be other learning gaps that might be keeping them from becoming redesignated, that we're working with them differently to make sure that they don't get there. So I, this is all our data that we wanna always compare, which is how our English learners are doing in the CASP, uh, in the English language arts and math. This, again, part of that real legal thing that we need to do. Uh, but 
we wanted to compare the three groups because this is actually what the dashboard shows you. They show you our English learners, they show you our redesignated or reclassified English learners, and our English only students. And you can see that um, the, in the numbers, our redesignated students, once they leave our program, are very well prepared to make sure that they stay at grade level. So in math, you'll see a similar pattern. Remember the difference from med is kind of like, you know, the, the distance from that measure. So we want to make sure that we continue to push in the right direction. We wanted to also include and highlight the fact that our students, that our English learners and all students, um, our district is very much on track and, um, and utilizing all of our resources to make sure that there is no that there's no gap, that there's no disparity. And so you're going to see these in regards to ours looks actually a little bit higher because we continue to improve and close that gap. So as you can see, very much side by side. They're, they're doing very well. Now, this is the coolest part that I get to tell you. We have been working, we worked in the DAC on goals and making sure that we were able to do this. And, and I, I am proud to say that. So I had a group of four parents, only two of which are here today. They came, they saw, we worked through the tool in order to get to blue and what it was that how we needed to break it up and how much the percentage was. And we did the first one here, which was our EL goal um, that night. But they insisted that we met on Friday with coffee and pan dulce and that we did the rest of the indicators for all English learners so that we could make sure that we had something to present back to the board and to the DAC in order to have their voice heard. And that's the kind of work. So I have to tell you, you know the first 10 to 20 pounds in a diet are hard, and then they get a little harder because, you know, <laughs> you have to continue to, to figure out how to, how, how to continue to make progress, right? I, that's the only equation I could give it to because I know that the struggle is real on that one too. But um, they figured out that if we make 6.3% every single year for the next three years, we are going to be in blue. And for us to be in blue is, is the goal because every child deserves the opportunity to, to, to make sure that they have what they need to be successful. So I wanted to present that work because that was them and their work and they wanna make sure that they have that. With that said, this is the same group that, um, this is the same group that has been leading the charge in making sure that we have the opportunities for our emergent bilinguals. And, um, you know, when we talk about why it is that you want to become bilingual, that developing of strong thinking skills, the, uh, the cultivating of grading cultural awareness, the using logic, all of the research says that, you know, it's really helpful in understanding not just math concepts and problems, but it just increases that reading comprehension and, and even helps you like less likely to get Alzheimer's. I know it's weird, but the research actually backs it up. Not just that, but it hel it's helpful when it comes to, to making sure that we have um, the opportunities across the globe, right, as a global society. So we wanted to make sure that we had the opportunity to, to, to mention something that's very exciting to us. I got to read um, on Friday uh, at Vanguard as well, but I got to read Un Pez, Dos Pez, Un Pez Rojo, Un Pez Azul <laughs> to the dual immersion class, which was pretty awesome. Um, we have our first kinder class and um, that st started at Vanguard uh, Prep, and uh, we have a full class, and and if it's 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 a joy to actually be in there and listen to these kiddos learning together and uh, and just doing what they're doing. Um, I was talking uh, I was talking to the staff there, and I was surprised to find out that um, they they shared with me that out of 157 applications, 51 of them actually 
uh, requested the dual immersion program for next year, I was like, yes, this is awesome. <laughs> so uh, one of the one of the things that we wanted to to highlight is 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 what a wonderful opportunity is for our students. But more than anything else, is because it creates that pathway to biliteracy. Um, we have Spanish and French classes that are offered to seventh and eighth graders there. And then both of our high schools have French and Spanish classes as well as Spanish for Spanish speaker classes. And every year I report this to you guys, but this is the first year that is exciting that I get to actually tie it in all the way to elementary school. And so it's, it's pretty cool because this is one of our California college and career indicators. And, um, as one of those college and career indicators that get them ready for the next steps, um, we actually have 45 students that, that, that were able to get that biliterate seal in the fall. And we have another 43 students that are taking the test now in the end. So that will probably be the biggest number of bilingual, biliterate, seal of biliteracy recipients that we will have across our district. So. I'm sorry I took so long, but <laughs> there's a lot of really great news to share. I will turn it over to our wonderful parents. I have Marisa Aragon. From, uh, she has a student at Vanguard and one at Apple Valley High School. And I have Felipe Hernandez from Granite Hills. Um, Ms. Silvia Bañuelos, our amazing teacher on assignment, is going to be translating. Señoras y señores, uh, miembros de la Junta Directiva. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the board. Personal docente y padres presentes, tengan una buena tarde. Staff and parents present, I hope you're having a good evening. Mi nombre es Maritza Aragón. My name is Maritza Aragón. En este momento les voy a hablar un poquito de lo, de lo que he aprendido en las reuniones donde se ha compartido el tema sobre los estudios étnicos. At this time, I'd like to speak a little bit about um, what we've learned at the, um, at the past meetings regarding the uh, ethnic studies. Me parece muy bien el plan de que se adhiera este curso en las escuelas. I find, um, or I, I'm happy to see um, this plan uh, to be developed at the, at the schools. <coughs> Pienso que es bien importante que nuestros hijos no pierdan el concepto de sus orígenes. Que aprendan sobre sus propias raíces, costumbres y culturas, como también de las otras razas que existen. That they learn about their roots, their cultural Um, and their origins, as well as learning about other cultures and other uh, races. Para que no hayan, um, para que hayan menos enfrentamientos interraciales, los cuales han existido en los años pasados. In hopes that this will prevent future um, interracial um, clashes, as we've seen in the past years. Creo que al implementar eh, este curso será de gran ayuda para las próximas generaciones. I believe that putting this course into place will, will, will help future generations. Independientemente de cómo se integren, ya sea un curso independiente o um, agregado a los otros cursos ya existentes, Regardless of how this program is implemented, whether it be a standalone uh, course or an integrated course. Creo que será de mucha ayuda siempre y cuando. I believe this will uh, be a great help always when, if and when. Uh, no se salgan de contexto y el objetivo sea el mismo de proporcionar una mejor educación a los estudiantes. As long as we keep the course in context, maintaining, um, maintaining respect, uh, good concepts, values, and uh, morals. 
oh, y se mantenga el respeto, buenos conceptos y valores o principios morales. Ok, while maintaining, um, again, respect, uh, good concepts, uh, values and morals. Muchas gracias por darme la oportunidad de poder compartir lo que uh, he estado aprendiendo. Um, es, es una buena oportunidad también para que los padres que no han asistido a estas reuniones puedan integrarse. Thank you for allowing me to uh, allowing me the time to speak, and I believe it's a great opportunity for other parents who haven't had the opportunity to assist these meetings and learn more about the uh, about the topic. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Tengan una buena noche. Hope you have a good evening. Buenas noches, mesa directiva y padres de familia, maestros. Good evening, um, board of directors, parents, and staff. Nuevamente me presento como el año pasado, solo que ahora orgullosamente dos hijos graduados, reclasificados, gran ejemplos. I would uh, like to reintroduce myself from last year, but this time proudly say that I am a, uh, I have two students that have redesignated and graduated from Granite Hills High School. Todavía tengo, gracias, todavía tengo una sobrina en Granite. Thank you. I still have one, one niece at Granite Hills. Reclasificada. Reclassified. Y por lo que han hecho mis hijos, ella quiere ser mucho más todavía. And because what she has seen that my children were able to accomplish, she wants to go above and beyond that. Clases de honores. Honors classes. Clases del BBC. BBC coursework. Y posiblemente ella quiere, ella quiere, eh, terminar sus créditos un semestre antes de graduarse. And possibly she really, really wants to uh, complete her coursework one semester before graduating. Todo eso gracias a los maestros, a tantas discusiones que usted pongo que ustedes han tenido. And all of that is thanks to uh, the staff at the schools, the teachers, and all of the conversations that I'm sure that you all have had. Gracias nuevamente. Thank you again. Quiero agradecer también porque he visto el proceso junto con los demás padres de familia de los chicos reclasificados. I'd like to give thanks again because I've seen all the work that the parents have done um, to assist the students that have been reclassified. Igual que Mariana, yo también me emociono cuando los veo en el color verde. Just like Mariana, I too get excited when I see the green. Y creo que también ustedes ya vieron cómo eh, está muy cerca del, del porcentaje, el estándar. Creo que lo estoy diciendo bien. And if I'm saying it correctly, I'm sure you all uh, noticed too that we are very close to meeting the standard. Disculparme con los maestros porque estamos pidiendo eh, si es posible el subir la barra y pedir un 8% más de progreso. I apologize to the teachers if I'm asking for a little too much, but we're, re I'm re we're requesting that we raise the bar a little bit and shoot for that 8% rather than the 6.3%. Cuando veo las fotos de nuestro curso eh, de inmersión de inglés, eh, me emociono y me recuerdo cuando yo también estuve al frente de una clase. I get excited and emotional when I think about uh, the dual immersion program because I too, uh, it takes me back and I remember my years in the classroom as well. Le decía a Mariana que espero eh, ser voluntario y estar aunque sea un día frente a esa clase. I was asking or telling Mariana that I would love to uh, be a volunteer in that classroom at least once, you know, once a day if possible, but volunteer my time in that classroom. Recuerdo cuando solamente era un sueño y hoy ya posiblemente tenemos, no es posible, vamos a tener un año ya de nuestros chicos de inmersión de inglés. I remember when the DLI programs was just a dream that we had and here we are, you know, excited to complete our first year of a DLI program. Le he contado a mi hija sobre la experiencia de los estudios étnicos. I've talked to my daughter about the experience we've had regarding the ethnic studies. Y está muy, pero muy envidiosa de la experiencia que tengo. And she's jealous of the fact that he's had an opportunity to be a part of it. Estamos haciendo historia. We're making history. Gracias nuevamente. Y quiero terminar eh, con unas palabras de un autor americano. Thank you again, and I'd like to finish with a few words from a, a, an American author. Eh, Ochmandino, en su libro El Ángel Número 12. Ochmandino, in his book Angel Number 12. Eh, eh, las palabras de Timothy, que decía, 
día a día, momento a momento, mejoro y mejoro. Day by day, moment by moment, by moment I... I uh... Mejoro y mejoro. Ok, I get better and better. Así es que decirles que eh, como, como distrito de Apovale, día a día, momento a momento, mejoramos y mejoramos. Muchas gracias. So just, I'd like to just reiterate that to the district. Um, day by day, moment by moment, by moment, we get better and better. Thank you. Did I, did I mention that he was a kinder teacher in Salvador? So, you know, I was like, yes, we want volunteers. So thank you very much. Uh, I know we took longer than, than we, um, that we had anticipated, but it's always great to share. Um, is there any questions or anything that I can answer for you guys? No? Okay. No thank you very much. Presentation on Governor's Budget Proposal and Second Interim di uh, District Financials. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be up here a couple times tonight, but the first presentation I'm going to introduce uh, Ms. Cindy Kunkel. She is our Director of Fiscal Services. Uh, she's going to speak to you a little bit about the governor's January budget proposal and some of the points that uh, he's proposed and introduced. And when she's finished, then I will talk about the second interim financials. So, Cindy. Good evening. Um, in January, we um, went to the governor's January budget proposal. Um, some of you were there um, and heard the same things that we did, that the we have a, a, a significant shortfall um, at the state level, which always trickles down to us. Um, the theme of that was that the governor see, says that there's a 30 to $40 billion budget shortfall. The LAO, the Legislative Analyst Office, says it's almost double that. <laughs> So there's this huge gap. Um, however, uh, the governor is committed to keeping um, the impact of that uh, away from education. His focus is really on um, continuing with the uh, learning loss and, and providing the, the program and the funding for all the stuff that we've done over the past couple of years due to the pandemic. Um, the good news is that because of the money that we've received over <clears throat> the last three, four years because of the pandemic, the, the big one-time infusions of cash that the state has given us, is, and with Prop 98, we've had higher than usual COLAs over the past few years, and one-time dollars going into that has allowed the state to save and put more money into the rainy day fund, specifically for times like this. So they do have... a. a a savings in the rainy day fund, a cushion that they can draw from to help mitigate some of these sh shortfalls. Um, <clears throat> the bad news is <laughs> that because of the last couple years of them delaying the tax deadline for people to file their taxes and pay their taxes, they moved it from April 15th to October 15th. Our budget is based on what comes in in April, that's what they used to project for the following year. With that delay, they had to really get creative and project certain amounts of money that they were gonna come in without knowing how much actually was going to come in in October. Last year and it, the year before then, especially last year, those tax receipts did not come to fruition that they had based our budget on in June and had approved and that was the enacted budget and they have to figure out how to how to continue to, to give us the money that they promised us um, in 22-23. So because of all of this, it looks like they actually gave us more money than they should have. Um, we don't know how he's going to fix that problem, if he's going to do cuts and we're, 
We're still working through all of the details of that. School services <clears throat> doesn't really know either. Um, so we'll have to find out in May a little bit more clarification on that. More good news. Um, he's not proposing any cuts or deferrals to, uh, to us, um, either for last year or this year or even for next year. Um, yet, exactly yet. Um, it's still early in the, in the cycle. January is really just the governor's first blush at what he thinks is going to happen. Right now, they're in the middle of negotiating. Between now and May, they'll, they'll be negotiating with the legislature. Um, and the LAO will, will provide their, their input. And they'll come up with a more refined, concise um, proposal for May, which is what our, our budget will be based on, or the assumptions that come out of May. Um, the bad news is, is that we aren't getting any extra money. There will be no one-time big cash infusions. There won't be hardly any COLA. Um, they are projecting that our, our COLA is going to be less than 1% at this point. Um, and this is coming off of years of very, very healthy and generous COLAs. So it's there's going to be some impact <clears throat> because of that. <clears throat> This is just a comparison of, you, you, it, it really illustrates the discrepancy between what the governor says is happening and what the legislative analyst office says is happening. There is a huge gap between, and then what was actually enacted. There's a huge gap in between those. So again, it's still very early. Um, the tax deadline is right around the corner. They'll have more refined numbers and a more uh, refined outlook um, after April 15th. This is just the historical trend of Prop 98 over the last 10 years. Um, and it really does show that even though we've had a, a few rough years, it's still trending up, meaning our, our revenues are still going up over time. It's following the, um, the S&P for capital gains. As you may or may not know, California is very dependent on sales tax, personal income tax, and very... Um, very dependent on capital gains taxes. So if the stock market, stock market does well, we do well. If it doesn't do well, we don't do well. But overall, it is trending upward at a really consistent pace, <clears throat> which is good for everybody. The COLA, um, this is a last 40 years of the COLAs that um, have been enacted in our budgets. Um, one important thing to note is you see it going up and down, up and down. Anything over a 6% is an anomaly. Those were especially good years. You know, the governor was feeling generous. Um, but overall, we're right where we probably should be. It's starting to renormalize. We're not going to see these 6, 7, 8 plus colas for a while. It's starting to taper down and get back to where it should be, where it has been historically. <clears throat> good, good news is what he's not proposing is cuts, like I said, cuts to any Prop, Prop 98 funding at this time. He's also not proposing any deferrals, meaning that we delaying giving us cash, putting it off to another year, more months, which causes us to have to borrow money to meet our obligations to pay our bills, um, which costs the district more money to do that. So that's not in the proposal at all. And he's also not proposing to sweep anything that we've already had or that he's already promised us and hasn't given us yet. Um, I don't know if you remember last year that did happen with some one-time grants that he gave us. They did sweep some of it back after they'd given us the cash. <clears throat> they took some of it back. Luckily, we were, we were able to weather that just fine. It had no effect on anything. Um, but he's not proposing that this, at this time. Again, everything could change again in May, <laughs> depending on tax receipts that come in. This is just, um, I just wanted to highlight that these are our base grants <clears throat> per ADA, but with the 0.76 COLA that they're proposing, it only equates to $75, between $75 and $91 more next year over this year. So it's, it's, it's insignificant. Just something to keep in mind. 
the colas um, at our at the first interim presentation, the assumption that we used was almost a four percent cola for next year. So our numbers were based on that. Second interim, we've had to reduce it by down to the 0.76, almost a little over three percent. Um, so that's just that's just a picture of how it fluctuate it can fluctuate from month to month, really. Um, they're projecting the 25-26 and the 26-27 year um, from what they had, are, they, they had projected at budget adoption back in June of 2023. Slight adjustments, nothing really significant, just slight adjustments downward. And again, these can absolutely change again in May. They can change again in June, and they can change again next year. So is, this is always a moving target. Um, <clears throat> what does this mean for Apple Valley? This is just a real rough what um, our estimates are at this time about our LCFF funding. Um, we're projecting 14,500 per ADA. Um, the one good thing that is kind of balancing things out for us is our ADA has improved pretty significantly, significantly this year. And um, when we got our P1 numbers, that was able to offset the reduction in LCFF due to the COLA dropping so far from first interim to now. So fingers crossed it holds and we're, we'll be all right. <clears throat> um, COLA, of all of these little special grants, they are applying COLA to some categorical programs. We only get three of those. We get the child nutrition mandate block grant special ed. Um, the rest of them don't really apply to us, but they are applying that uh, 0.76% COLA to those programs. It's never enough anyway. So even if they gave us 10%, it still wouldn't be enough to cover those programs, but that's okay. And um, these are the, the projections that I'll be using for this, well, at second interim and for the next four out years, including budget for next year, um, planning factors that we use to determine how much money we're going to get, how much things are going to cost us, like PERS and STIRS, as you can see, is especially PERS is consistently going up. STIRS seems to be pretty steady, but PERS goes up every year, and by 27, 28, we'll be paying 30 cents for every dollar we pay an employee to PERS. So that is a significant jump. It's a significant expense to the district. Um, so we, we have to plan for that as well. This was just to illustrate the pace um, at which minimum wage has been going up over, over the last couple years and in the future. Um, it's currently at $16 an hour, and it is scheduled to increase every January 1 for the next five, six years by 40 to 50 cents an hour. So that is also something that we have to keep in the back of our minds to make sure that we as a district <clears throat> keep up with the pace of minimum wage. local reserve caps, the 10% cap that we're allowed to have in our reserves still stands. Um, yeah, <laughs> it hasn't changed. We still have to cap it. Yeah. Um, so what happens now, they're, like I said, they're negotiating with the, the legislator and the governor. They're having meetings. They're, they're saying, you know, whatever they do in negotiating. Um, what they're going to spend for next year and on what they're going to spend. So um, we're kind of in a, just in a wait and see um, right now for the next couple months until um, the May revise comes out in the middle of May. And that's what we'll be wasting our 2024 uh, 20, 25 budget on, is whatever those numbers. And that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? You're going to see some of this again yeah. in my slides for our second interim financials. Thank you. Sarah. I do. Hold on. Sorry. Oh, you have a question? Yes. I do. Sure. Um, one of the things that came up in January, and I'm just wondering if it still stands um, with the 0.76 COLA, mm -hmm. they said that that usually the state tries to avoid that at all costs, and they usually will try to bump that up to 2% especially in election years, do you think 
that still stands or do we just still have to wait until May? We still or? have to wait until May. That's when they will do an adjustment. Um, sometimes you'll, as you get closer to when they release it, you'll hear some chitter chatter about it. But as of right now, they usually don't give us an official answer until May. We are of the opinion and listening to some other experts that we mm -hmm. <clears throat> get advice from other than school services, <clears throat> they seem to think it's gonna be one, maybe 1 1.1, 1 1.2, when everything's said and done. But as of right uh -huh. now, it's 0.76. Yeah, I wrote down also, I think 1.27. I don't remember why that number came up, but I have I that written down too. That yeah. That was one of the previous estimates of the statutory COLA. Remember this 0.76 is the statutory COLA, right. and it's calculated using some variables which don't necessarily reflect California's economic condition, but they represent the United States economic condition. And there's still another couple of variables that have to come in before the official statutory COLA is calculated. However, the legislature and the governor have the ability to not fund that, which right. they've done in the past. So, you know, even though the statutory COLA may come in at one or 1.1, 1 .1, uh, we are worst case scenario, the, the funded COLA may be zero. Okay. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you, Cindy. Um, moving on, I'll just go through our second interim report for uh, this particular year again. These are, um, what, this is the second of the two interim reports. Again, this is a snapshot of our district financials as of January 31st. And again, as Mariana said, this is one of those legal requirements, report due to the county by the 15th. Um, so, <clears throat> positive certification, again, qualified. You'll see the history across the state of districts in financial, uh, um, well, not doing so good financially, either qualified or, cert or negative. You'll see those numbers have gone down. We will be certifying positive. That's part of our report in the consent agenda later on. <clears throat> okay, now you won't move. Now let's try that. So as, as Cindy mentioned, we had some COLA assumptions at budget adoption and first interim. I wanted to put the comparisons up here you could, so you could see. Our current year COLA was 8.22. That, of course, didn't change, even though the significant decline in property, to, or I'm sorry, personal income tax revenue and corporate tax revenue at the state level. They didn't adjust the COLA down going backwards, but they did adjust going forward again, as Cindy mentioned, the statutory at 0.76 and 2.73 in the out year. Again, this is for the current budget cycle, which is current year and the next two um, up to June of 2026. So in 2024, assumptions as we build our multi-year projection and what we have to do, we have our LCFF calculator that we use, the funded ADA of 12,597, which is actually for next year, we're assuming that that will be funded at this year's ADA level. Um, our COLA at 0.76%, LCFF revenue increase uh, comes to about $2 million. Um, and that's offset by expenditure increases, um, step and column for our team members, um, utilities cost more, um, everything we buy is costing more. Um, the, on the federal and the state revenue, you'll see the adjustments. That's all based on some of that ESSER one-time money. That's all expired June of 2024. So we're assuming none of that will exist in 24-25 in the budget. Our projected expenditures for next year, again, all negotiated settlement step and column. You'll see the STRS and PERS employer contribution rates. And again, I mentioned removing all the one-time COVID relief funding, and, and we assume it's all expensed. Um, 25, 26, again, we go to an ADA of 12,665, which slight growth in enrollment and a continued slight growth in our ADA yield percentage with that 2.73% COLA. That does net us an LCFF revenue increase of 6.9 million in unrestricted revenues. And you'll see in the multi-year projection how that works out as we move through the budget cycle. On the expenditure side, there are no negotiated settlements effective in the 25, 26 school year, so we have not in included any costs pertaining to that. We do have step and column, the stirs and purrs. We are assuming some operational efficiencies, and I'm gonna keep that term broad at this point. Operational efficiencies can mean anything from trying to spend less on electricity, spending less on water. Um, <clears throat> looking at the programs and what we're doing throughout our district and making sure our programs using data are working and we're spending the money in all the right places. 
So if we look at the multi-year projections, this is the unrestricted side of our budget, which is primarily our LCFF revenue and expenses related to the LCFF. So you'll see our, our revenue is up there on the top line, uh, expenditures. You'll see the excess deficiency line. Unfortunately, we do have a deficit spend in the current year of about 8 million. 24, 25, we're projected about seven and a half and then 25, 26, about 3.2. So I'm just gonna say this, we're getting closer to balanced, but we're not balanced. Um, that's our goal is to make that ex excess deficiency a zero. Um, spend this year's money on this year's kids. So you'll see the effect on the unrestricted ending fund balance. We're down to 8.1 million in June of 2026 based on the assumptions we have in place today. Uh, that does meet our minimum, 3% required reserve. However, um, that does not meet our board policy of a 5% required reserve. So sometime as we're working on our next budget, we will have to uh, take that into consideration and perhaps even institute more operational efficiencies to arrive at that current board policy for our unrestricted uh, reserve. This is the restricted side of the budget. You'll see an incredibly large deficit spend this year, and that has a lot to do with spending all that one-time money because there is no revenue for that. We got that money last year, the year before, and the year before. So we're expensing it now out of the fund balance uh, <clears throat> on appropriate programs supported by those one-time funds. And you'll see we normalize our revenue over 24, 25, and 25, 26. That is very um, characteristic of pre-pandemic um, restricted revenue numbers. Uh, our title programs, federal programs, some of our state categorical programs. And the current assumption is that we will spend that down to zero. So in the combined numbers, I'm sorry, we'll spend that down to 100,000. So in the combined numbers, our ending fund balance is primarily an unrestricted ending fund balance. You see all the way over to the right and all the way down, you see that 8.271 million. And again, that does meet our 3%. Um, so just really quick, you'll notice um, on the revenue line, we'll see we're 248, 659 this year and 230. Again, that's normalized. None of the one-time monies is still there. None of those restricted programs. And you'll see that 230 million to 236.9. That's primarily that LCFF increase up there on that revenue side. But again, our expenditures are, are coming down, um, projected to come down a little bit with those efficiencies. Uh, yet to be identified, and we're getting closer and closer to balanced. This is a quick look at the components of the ending fund balance. Again, I reference our 3% required reserve down there, 7.2 million in June of 2026, and we're at 8.2. Uh, so we do meet that. Again, as I mentioned, we, however, we do not meet the 5% board policy required reserve. So highlights, great thing is our enrollment pre-pandemic, March of 2020, just before the pandemic, we were 13,247. On the most recent enrollment report, we were 13,650. So we're about 400 students higher than we were pre-pandemic. That is not the trend across the state of California. Uh, the trend across the state of California is, is larger declines um, and, and students, um, have left the state of California, moved out of the urban centers, a lot of districts experiencing decline across the state. Our ADA, our attendance ratio is typically 94, 95 uh, post pandemic um, coming out last year, we were in the high 80s. This year we're almost 92%, which is a significant, significant increase as Cindy mentioned earlier, it really helps offset some of that decline in um, the COLA for next year. Again, local programmatic decisions as we move through the budget cycle. May revise is coming next. That'll give us some more information. And I know some representatives from Abuda and CSEA have been invited to um, view the May revise, which is actually going to be a webinar this, this May. It will, will not be live, which is easier for more people to get involved and watch. And of course, we, we will look out for the adopted budget when that comes um, in June and what kind of adjustments we'll have to make uh, when we come back in the fall. Any questions on the second interim that I can address? Thank you. Kylie, do we have any public comments? We do.
Susan Calgren. Good evening, Superintendent Nelson, board members, cabinet, and audience. My name is Susan Calgren, and I'm the Avuda Special Ed Chair. I come to you tonight to give an update on issues we're having in special education in our district. The past school year, we started using the SAFE for students who have an IEP. Things have been very difficult and frustrating. As of today, we still have many teachers missing students on their caseload and in SACE, as well as students still unaffirmed, which means if you work on their IEP, it gets erased. Many teachers have reached out to student services regarding the unaffirmed and missing students with no response. At the end of September, we received a very fast two-hour training from Priscilla Avila. At the time of the training, we could still not access SACE. Finally, in November, the first IEPs were able to be written using SACE. In December, we received two lengthy emails from Priscilla. Numerous special education teachers reached out to me regarding the emails and the confusion that we had over them. I emailed Priscilla to see if another training on SACE could be planned. Priscilla wrote me back and said, good idea. In January, we received more emails regarding SACE, and I emailed Priscilla again regarding training. I never re received a reply. In the beginning of February, Karen Sabres, two speech therapists, and myself met with David Wheeler, Priscilla, and Dustin Conrad to go over speech language caseloads, SACE, and co-teach. I thought the meeting went very well. However, again, we heard nothing back regarding training dates. I emailed David and Priscilla again for updates about training as well as issues with large caseloads. Ten days later, this past Monday, I received a response back with SACE training dates. One was Saturday. The other was Saturday before Easter, April, and April 17th, a Wednesday. I told David that Saturdays would be difficult for our members as was given less than a week's notice and the other is the day before Easter. I truly believe if SELPA was contacted earlier in the year when requested, we would have had more than two days notice for training and more would have been available during working hours or during the work week. An IEP is a legal federal document, usually between 20 and 40 pages. You would think that your teachers and support providers would want to be properly trained um, to fill out the information. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be a priority. The other issue are large caseloads. We have several RSP teachers with caseloads larger than the Ed Code limit of 28 students. One currently has 36 and one soon to be 34. Several have 30. Our speech therapists also have been dealing with large caseloads with an average of 70. When we met with Dave and Priscilla, they did offer to have the slippers, those are the speech assistants, to be able to work additional hours to help out. Unfortunately, they can provide assistance, but not with all the paperwork required for IEPs. We need to continue to work on getting these caseloads down. Avuda has and is willing to work with the district to figure out solutions to these problems. We are hoping we can have a better and timely communication as well as follow through with student services to come up with a plan to solve these problems. To end on a good note, next Thursday, March 14th at Granite Hills High School is our field day for our students with moderate to severe disabilities. Each student is matched up with a regular student for a day of fun activities. Hope you can make it. Lastly, on April 10th at Apple Valley High School, we'll be holding our special ed dance for our moderate to severe students for both Granite and Apple Valley High School. I hope you can come out and see these amazing students. They made an invitation that I have for all of you guys to be able to come as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Superintendent's comments. We have nothing. Yes. Um, Mrs. Buchanan, comment. No, I'm good. Mr. Arce. Nothing further. Mr. Raleigh. No, ma'am. I have a comment. <coughs> I would like to um, be sure that the superintendent looks into these allegations that are coming from the uh, special education since we are serving kids 
to be sure that this is not an issue that is real or made up and, and at least get back to us so that we know what is really going on. All right, discussion, action, session. It is recommended that the Board of Trustees discuss and take action on the following items. We have to mutually agree on no more than six candidates for the 2024 Ca California School Boards Association Delegate Assembly for Subregion 16B. The, um, the candidates are as follows. Heather Allgood, uh, Helendale School District, Amanda Buchanan, Apple Valley School District, Tom Courtney, Lucerne Valley USD, Barbara Du, Victor Valley USD, Cindy Gardner, uh, Rim of the World, Clayton Moore, Victor Elementary School District, and Scott Wyatt, San Bernardino City USD. I will need a motion to, um, to uh, vote for six people on this um, list. So moved. We have to move it to open it, right? Yeah. I'll well, <clears throat> um, I'd like to recommend Cindy Gardner. I'd like to recommend Amanda Buchanan. I'd like to recommend uh, Barbara Du. About Tom Courtney. Tom Courtney. Uh, Heather Alden. Okay, we have our six. Oh, and we have Clayton Moore. So we'll need. Um, I'll make a motion we approve those six. And I'll second them. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we are now approving Heather Allgood, Amanda Buchanan, Tom Courtney, Barbara Dew, Cindy Gardner, Clayton Moore. Approve the updated Apple Valley Unified School District Governance Handbook. I need a motion. I'd like to discuss that. We'll need a motion first and then discuss. Motion second and then discussion. Motion second and then discuss. I'll make a motion that we approve or visit it. We need a second on that. I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? <laughs> Uh, I have a question on the section in the governance handbook regarding orientation of new members. It says that the, um, the new language, the proposed language, says that newly elected members may not participate in board activities, business or professional development uh, until they have been seated following the oath of office. Uh, just have a, a question on that. Uh, newly elected board members um, have been chosen by the, the will of the people by the voters. And uh, it seems that, that um, newly elected board members would benefit from uh, as much training as they could get. Um, I think it's, it's helpful to the effectiveness of the board and the uh, effectiveness uh, the, and, and students would be impacted in a positive way for incoming board members to be trained as well as they possibly could for them to uh, get as much training as, as is possible to hit the ground running, as it were, to not be playing catch up um, in this position in terms of uh, overseeing this many students with a budget of this size, I think it would be uh, beneficial for incoming board members who are new to this position to get as much training as possible uh, so that they can be as effective as possible from day one or when they immediately take office. Um, to not allow incoming board members to get professional development, which would enhance their effectiveness, uh, I think limits them and uh, limits their effectiveness and, and students would be affected by that. So I, I disagree with that statement there. I think incoming board members should get as much possible training as they can be so that they can be as effective as possible as soon as possible. How does it read now? It reads, newly elected members may not participate in board activities, business or professional development until they have been seated following the oath of office. And again, my, my question, my concern is these incoming board members have been selected by the will of the people. Right. And, I, thought, and, I think what, what, it, what it means, because we, we had that discussion, I don't believe you were at that meeting, but the reasoning behind it is 
because we discuss confidential information such as uh, closed session with expulsions, personnel issues, and the such that uh, until you're officially sworn in uh, and uh, certified by the um, ROV that you cannot sit in. Am I correct on those? Yeah, that, that was the, um, the conversation because uh, uh, the people may have voted for the board, board member to become a board member, but until that vote has been certified by the um, register of voters, um, that person is really not yet a board member. It doesn't say. So, it doesn't say. So that's uh, that's the language I would like to. I hear what you're saying, and it makes some sense because I think um, we we had a challenge year, years ago where we had um, an outgoing board member and the incoming board member both going to the same training, but we don't really need the outgoing to go to the training. Exactly. The outgoing needs to step away so that the incoming can go. Um, and so now we had that thing in the middle um, that I, that we thought um, that it would be best for whoever is going to be the trustee. We we'll wait for the uh, register of voters to uh, give us the okay that says this person was certified is good to go. You don't have to be sworn in, you know. So uh, that's not if, what the language if, says, though. Okay, I understand. So I think what we need to do, uh, if it is okay with the rest of the board, is to pass it back to the uh, superintendent to give us a different language. And perhaps we can put it in a different box uh, and put it in a different location uh, instead of putting it in the handbook so that whoever is incoming will understand. This is, it becomes more like uh, administrative regs or something instead of being into the uh, board handbook. So and, I, I understand what you're saying. I, so I that one's not talking about closed that. sessions. It's not. It's not. It's talking about professional development. So. It's yeah. a, it's an orientation portion. Um, as and what I'm understanding is, um, it originally said immediately following the selection of a new member, members will be seated following the oath of office, and then the new section now says newly elected members may not participate in board activities, business, or professional development until they have been seated following the oath of office. Um, that's tr that the 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 part of it of that they would not participate in closed session or exactly. actually be seated at the dais is one part. This professional development piece, which um, really ties back to the annual education conference through um, California School Boards Association, um, you do have a board bylaw ninety two forty where it discusses um, board training. I think if if you want to delineate how. Um, new members, even once it's certified, even if they haven't taken the oath of office, would be able to attend that California School Boards mm -hmm. Association meeting. I think that it could lie there in a board, um, the board bylaw very specifically. So if you um, are okay with that, maybe um, if, if we can either bring the, the governance handbook back next month, or we can um, ask, you can, you can approve it with the orientation that. of new members blue section removed the the part that was added and then i can bring back the board bylaw with some suggestions on how to deal with um newly elected versus outgoing and very specifically about that california school boards association the, annual this education issue call. brings up the corollary issue which, which you mentioned in that if a board member is not re-elected why are we spending taxpayer money to send them to training when they're going to be out of office in a matter of days? It seems like a waste of money. And, and that, that ties in with this issue, but yet is not explained and spelled out in this. So I think there needs so, to be uh, some. My suggestion will be to uh, take that out mm -hmm. and turn it over to the superintendent mm -hmm. uh, to put it in the right spot where it belongs and bring it back to us in the next board, uh, board meeting. With those points so clarified. With that points clarified. And one other thing that I'm just thinking of too, and I know we're gonna pull it, so it doesn't really matter, but just that I did not think about when we were discussing this previously, but the way it is worded right now, it almost makes it sound like with the workshop that you held for all the candidates, it would almost exactly go against that as well. Exactly. The, the blue sentence is contradictory with the sentence right after. You know, where you provided information just on the, the district in general. Right. You know what I mean? I do. It wasn't yeah, there. 
it right. Was, no, it wasn't. It was but I'm an saying addition. If we did add yeah. that, we almost would not be able to do that sure. for anybody who threw their hat in that's the right. ring yeah. in the future. And that's why you do a workshop and you right. talk well, and about it. And I didn't it, think of that at all. And it. I sat in that meeting. I, I don't have the excuse of not being there because I was there. But I now think, that I'm listening. I think, I think as a board, um, if somebody wants to be a board member, if somebody wants to serve on the board, I think it would be a good practice to uh, give them a, a, an overview of what this district is about. Uh, it was and, very bad. And sure. give them uh, information so that they they can go in with their eyes wide open to say, okay, I'm going in here. This is what you are required to do. It is not, there's no violation of, of um, confidential information. Right. There. Exactly. You know, you are just getting all of the information. That book is out there. Anybody can pick up my uh, handbook and, and use it. Everybody can get a hold of it just to see what a board member does. Because it is always interesting to think that you can do the job of a board member until you get into the seat. And then when you get into the seat, you see all of the rules that are in place that makes it hard for you to do all of the things you've been promising everybody on the street. So it is important for that person to have a good understanding coming in to um, actually tell themselves, uh, when I go in here, I'm not serving myself. I'll be serving a group of people, teachers, children, families, I will be doing that. But that training is important Unfortunately, it's not a whole week's worth of training, but it's important for whoever wants to come in to be able to get it, right. um, to get the knowledge. But when you spend, um, I don't know how much it is to send people to the AEC uh, for one person, um, you know, we need to really button that down so that we can save uh, the, ta the taxpayer money and not send people who are really not going to service the district um, to go. So that was one of those one time things. And I, I don't think it will happen again because that's why we're trying to button it down now so that the next AEC election time is coming. Um, whoever, uh, it, because by the time um, the election finishes, the, the application or the paperwork for the AEC has already been submitted. A name has been put in. We've already paid for it. So the person is thinking they're going to go, but if they didn't win, their name is still on the list. So we need to be able to find a way to say, okay, if your name is on the list and you didn't uh, succeed in that election, whoever took over from you, there will have to be a transition to change your name, change your name for the, that person to go to the agency. Yeah, it's a placeholder. Yeah. It's a placeholder. Yeah. And and I have board bylaw um, 9240 open right now. Um, and it does cover the orientation as well. So I think it would nicely fit here to very much delineate at election time, um, as long as it's certified. That's the only issue because we've yeah, had a year where certified. it was quite close and it wasn't certified yet. And we waited and waited until to get results, but, last but we can be very specific. And so I'll bring that back at, if that's okay. Um, and maybe get it to you ahead of time with just some information to see if it, if it aligns and then we can bring sure. it as a board item for the, April 4th board meeting? April 4th board, board meeting. It's April 4th. Yeah. Okay. You memorize it? Yeah, we were talking about it. Earlier. That's why I was. Okay. Then okay. Do you, we would Is just it... need, if you want to bring the governance handbook, um, take it from draft to um, back to the governance handbook, you could just amend it with that line um, removed if that okay. would serve the board. If not, we can bring it back um, at the April board meeting as well amended i think most of what's on the um governance handbook is good uh if we just pull that section and bring it back just the line does that line. so you can approve it as a, with a, the amendment with, the with amendment. that line removed yes well, i think i made the motion so why don't uh amend the motion to remove that paragraph, paragraph. yeah you good with that gary it's one sentence okay one sentence. Yeah, so we, we still need us. We need a second on that. I'll, I'll second it. Okay. All in all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Approval of successor contract between Apple Valley Unified District School District and California School Employees Association Chapter Number Eight Two Eight. Period of agreement: July first, twenty twenty three, through June thirty. 
2026. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Approve the certificated and classified personnel actions as listed. So moved. I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Approve the recommendation for requested leaves as noted. I need a motion. I'll move it. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Approve the recommendation of the administrative hearing chairperson effective immediately on expulsion case number 12, 2023 to 2024. I'll move items uh, 12. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Expulsion number 13. I'll move that item as well. Any discussion? Uh, second. second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Expulsion case number 14, 2023 to 2024. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Approve the amended addendum A to the contract with California Professional Management for the TK Classroom Building Project at Desert Knowles Elementary, Sandia Academy, and Yakaloma Elementary. I need a motion. So moved. I second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Consider the financing options for the construction of the Granite Hills High School Stadium and transitional kindergarten classroom located at Desert Knowles Elementary, Sandia Academy, and Yakaloma Elementary and provide direction to staff for securing financing for the aforementioned projects. Before we do that, I think somebody is ready to get started. Do we need to make a motion so you can yes. open it for discussion? Yes. So yes. moved. I, I need, I, okay. Uh, he's, he made, made the motion and second. Any, um, uh, all in favor? No, no, no. No, discussion we can't approve first. it yet. This, we got to discuss it. Any discussion? Yes. Okay, I have some discussion. The gentleman and at a the presentation. The, the, the gentleman and I'm sorry, I didn't mention earlier, my presentations were clipped together. You should have four copies, Cindy's, mine, and then this yeah. one. And, and the next one for the next item. <clears throat> um, I'm going to talk a little bit about a uh, facilities construction, construction and certificates of participation as a financing tool. If you recall, over the last couple of years, we've talked to uh, two projects mainly related to uh, COP financing. The first is our transitional kindergarten. Uh, it's a full implementation in school year 25-26, which translates to uh, um, I don't know what our enrollment translates to because it's really interesting. Um, in theory, there'd be a thousand TK kids eligible in the fall of 25. The state of California estimates only about 60% of eligible transitional kinders are showing up. Our numbers are even less than that. Um, but we still do need classrooms throughout our district to serve these students when they do show up. So the project design status, we actually, um, I think on the board agenda tonight, you're ratifying a contract with Silver Creek Modular Incorporated for the construction of these buildings. They were low bidder. Um, each building has two classrooms. I believe I shared that with you a couple meetings ago or last meeting. Um, site plans, the architect and the engineering is in process. Uh, we've had consultants out doing soils tests, uh, topo studies, to get grades for path to travel, all those wonderful things. So this, this next slide is a estimated project budget based on where we are right now for our TK classrooms. I, it's broken down into three main categories, the modular buildings and site work. And site work means everything to get the site ready for the buildings. That's uh, excavation, compaction, um, foundations, sidewalks. Um, new playgrounds, shade structures over playgrounds, um, all the things that will make those areas great for our new TK students. 
Uh, our general conditions and construction management is uh, just that. The general conditions is a lot of the items that go along with the construction. One of the most visible components of general conditions is all the fencing that goes. And the fencing doesn't cost $1.7 million, but it's a component of those general conditions. The CM, California Professional Management, they manage it, every aspect of this project and coordinate for us uh, as a district. Um, and you just did approve the amendment to their contract on this particular project. Soft costs, contingencies, and escalation. Um, that is everything that doesn't fall into those first two categories. That's architect fees, engineering fees, inspection fees, uh, soils test, geotechnical testing, uh, contingencies. Any time we enter into a construction contract with a contractor, we build in a contract allowance. For instance, I'll go back to our HVAC project with F, um, I'm sorry, yes, FMS, Franklin Mechanical Systems on phase two. It was approximately an 8.2 million contract. We had a several hundred thousand dollar allowance as part of that, just in case things come up. Guess what? Things do come up when you're ripping old air conditioners off of buildings, put new ones on. We had additive change orders, allowance change orders, deductive change orders as we go through the process. So that's what those contingencies are for. Uh, CPM is recommending an escalation as, believe it or not, things are costing more. Inflation is still going up. So there's that built in. So we are estimating at this point for these three campuses two buildings on each campus in each building contains two classrooms so it's a total of 12 classrooms four classrooms on each campus we're estimating a potential total budget of about 16 and a half million dollars on to the next project that we've talked about in the concept of financing using cops our stadium athletic complex over at granite hills high school some components that have been designed to this point uh, within the stadium is a synthetic turf field with lighting, uh, all weather surface track, seating for about 4,500 people, 3,000 on the home, 1,500 on the visitor, a field house, which can is locker rooms, a training room, uh, restrooms for the athletes, um, let's see what else, a referee room, a visitor's locker room, uh, which doubles as a weight room facility. Snack bar and restroom facilities, uh, again, at the entrance, I think in the... Um, uh, the uh, illustrations, you saw the entrance pavilion, that's been part of that design. It contains restrooms to service both the visitor side and the home side separately to keep separation of the spectators at the contests. Small snack bars on either side. Of course, appropriate parking and traffic areas to navigate around the facility and get into the facility and some small ancillary facilities for maintenance and operations. And unfortunately, I'm going to tell you right now, this next slide is going to kind of sting a little bit. It's expensive to build athletic stadiums, much, much more expensive than we anticipated when we initially embarked on this project. Uh, this is an estimate with conceptual designs. And Mike Woods at CPM, who's our construction manager, he's the principal of that company, will say this estimate is going to be a little bit high because we are still only in conceptual. But they are using industry standards when it comes to synthetic turf, square feet, all weather tracks. Southern Bleacher Company makes, they install the grandstands at every high school stadium in the United States. So their pricing is pretty known. Musco Lighting is a very well-known company. Their pricing is fairly steady. <clears throat> the question is when it comes to some of the parking, the concrete, the asphalt, the flat work, those prices are fluctuating quite a bit right now. But you can see for site work in buildings, they're currently estimating about $27.6 million. That was our initial budget for this whole project going into this project, was about 25 to $27 million for construction and soft costs and contingencies and general conditions and construction management. So you can see how costs have inflated this. So based on this conceptual design, our CM is pegging this at about a $46 million project over at Granite Hills High School. Now, the $63 million question, how do we pay for these? We've talked about all these different mechanisms. 
the first of which is some local funding sources that we do have some resources. We have Fund 40, which is um, our special reserve fund for capital outlay. We have approximately $5 million in Fund 40, which includes the remaining proceeds from a COP we issued back in 2020. Uh, we have Fund 25 for developer fees. With those two accounts together, we have approximately $11 million at the ready for projects somewhat like these. Um, the developer fees do come with restrictions. Developer fees would be very appropriate for transitional kindergarten classrooms. However, not very appropriate for an athletic facility. So COP, Certificates of Participation. It is again, it's non-voter approved debt. It's issued at the discretion of the board. We borrow against a known revenue stream and we borrow against a revenue stream of redevelopment revenue. Again, that's a property tax increment in certain redevelopment areas. Um, and even though those RDA agencies were dissolved several years ago, we still get this pass through revenue until about, I think, 2053. Um, and again, COPs are used for capital improvement projects. So an option we have is to issue a new COP, a borrow against the remainder of that revenue stream because in our 2020 COP, we did not borrow against the entire RDA revenue stream. So that 2020 is supported entirely through that stream with some excess, which has been deposited into fund 40, which I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> a scenario to consider. If the board wishes to borrow against the remaining RDA revenue stream without any impact on the unrestricted general fund, we can borrow about $17 million. That is an estimate from our financial advisor, uh, Piper Sandler. You'll see I just made some notes there. The 2020 COP debt service through that RDA revenue stream goes to the year 2050, school year 4950. And a 2024 COP would go to the year 2053. That just seems so far away. 30-year mm -hmm. debt service. Um, but again, no impact to the general fund. Another scenario, again, numbers prepared by our financial advisor, and these are projections based on current market interest rates, costs of borrowing, those types of things. We could borrow about 30 million. Um, We'll use the remaining RDA revenue stream and we will impact the unrestricted general fund in this scenario to the tune of almost $900,000 a year for the next 30 years. One more scenario to consider, borrow 40 million. Again, you notice I haven't got to 63 million yet, um, but borrowing 40 million again uh, uses the remainder of the RDA revenue stream impacts the general fund to the tune of about $1.6 million a year for 30 years. So this is the point where I'm going to ask the board from, for some direction, but I'm going to make a recommendation. Um, we have some options. The first option is to issue a COP for $17 million. No impact to the general fund. The process to obtain the funding takes about four months. And if we borrow 17 million, we would be able to, without breaking into our local fund sources, our fund 40 and our developers fees, we would be able to complete the transitional kindergarten project at the three schools identified with that scenario. The other scenario is to issue a COP impacting the general fund um, to build our TK classrooms, for our new required grade level and to build portions, uh, phase the construction of a stadium, um, that's an option. The, the one on the bottom there, I, I think that that's, that's actually my recommendation at this point. This is a lot of information. This is a very brief presentation. Um, I would recommend at this point that we take a step back um, gather the board in a workshop, um, invite our financial advisor, invite our construction manager, and invite our architect to talk about different ways to accomplish what we need to accomplish in our short-term facility needs, including the kindergarten classrooms, the TK classrooms, 
and our stadium at Granite Hills High School. I know that was a lot. Um, if anybody has any questions, I think that's my next slide. Um, I'll be happy to answer if I can. Um, if I may, um, you know, we've been at this for five and a half hours tonight and you hit us with this. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, it's big. 930 at night and we're looking at all these numbers mm -hmm. and these options and things. I think I wouldn't be opposed to tabling it or doing a workshop on mm -hmm. this so we can make some rational decisions where we're all kind of awake. Absolutely. Yeah. So that would be my recommendation. And, and I would recommend when we do address it to involve some of our consultants in right. that process. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. probably the best idea. Plus, we are missing one of our board members. Correct. Absolutely. Table it. I think we need to table it so that we will have a clear mind to be able to make the decision when the time comes. And at least to invite other stakeholders to be, um, to participate in the process. I understand. Well. So we will ask Kylie to get with the board for a potential workshop dates, um, mm -hmm. most likely it. after spring break at this point, right. obviously. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Sometime in April. Matt, I, I just have a quick question. Certainly. Um, on the beginning, on the TK enrollment, you said the Califor California estimates 60% uh, of eligible, eligible TK students actually enroll? That's what the California Department of Education estimated um, prior to the implementation of transitional kindergarten or at the early stages of the implementation process. And you said here in our district, our, our, what we're seeing so far is substantially below that? We are below 60% of eligible. Do you, do you know about yeah. what that percentage is? I, you know, Mr. RC, I don't have that number okay. in my head, but I will go back and okay. look, I was at, just curious. look at our projection versus okay. our actual enrolled, and I will share that information. Okay, thank you. So, Kylie, do we need a motion to table that item about yeah. COP? Yeah, so we um, are going to need a motion to, um, we have considered the financing options for the construction of the Granite Hills High School Stadium and transitional kindergarten classrooms located at Desert Knolls Elementary, Sandia Academy, and Yakaloma Elementary. And you have provided direction to table this at this time regarding securing financing for the affirmant aforementioned projects and we will hold a board workshop um to bring this item back forward i'll make that motion and i'll second it all in favor aye, aye. aye. received information and update on a potential general obligation bond on the november 2024 ballot and provide direction to staff i need a motion you have a presentation on that one matt yes yeah, <laughs> He's full of presentations tonight. Yes. I, I just need a motion. So moved. I second it. Any discussion? Yes. Yeah, we do have some discussion. Thank you. Again, you have a copy of this presentation in front of you, and I apologize bringing some more fairly heavy information uh, this late at night. Um, we have talked, uh, I'm, I'm calling this one the $200 million question, merely because in our draft facility master plan, our consultant with working with our architect has identified, initially identified right around $200 million in projects uh, to improve our schools for our students here in Apple Valley Unified. So the, quest, the big question here is how do you pay for current student program and facility needs and future program and facility needs for our students in Apple Valley? Some of you may recall, some of you may not recall back in February of 22, we talked about all these programs. Again, tonight we're focusing on the general obligation bond the board, um, the five board members as of April 14th, 2022, I know two of the current board members were not present at that meeting, approved a resolution. That resolution did authorize the investigation of the feasibility of a GO bond. It authorized district staff, mainly myself, to retain the services of the appropriate consultants, of which we have a financial consultant, Piper Sandler. Uh, Tim Carty has been our longtime consultant. He retired December 31st, but his partner, Jin Kim, who has worked on many of our financing over the years is our consultant at this point. Uh, legal experts, that's typically bond counsel. Uh, we use David Kaznoka for our COPs and our previous uh, issuances of debt. Uh, facility needs assessment master plan, we had Eric Hall and Associates um, working with them to complete that process. 
Um, and then the board, that resolution also, also authorized uh, going out and finding a public opinion research consultant and a communication consultant. And it, just to make it clear to everyone, that resolution did not authorize an actual geo bond election. It was only to investigate the feasibility. So really, <clears throat> A GO bond again is required is uh, considered voter approved debt. Um, it is 55% to to pass. It levies an ad valorem tax on all property on all property owners within the school district boundary, not the town of Apple Valley boundary, but the Apple Valley Unified School District boundary. The maximum tax tax rate is 60 per 100,000 of assessed value, and it does require an oversight committee again. And it's it's facility improvements, new construction. Uh, and you can also use a general obligation bond to discharge existing COP debt. So that is an option um, when dealing with COP debt that impacts general fund. Um, there's some ingredients to a bond really quick. Total bond amount, it's typically sized to meet project needs. Um, again, and I, that's why I called this the $200 million question at the beginning. Um, but there are some constraints. We have a statutory bonding capacity, and that is a percentage of our assessed valuation within our district. Our bonding capacity right now is estimated at about $200 million. Um, that bonding capacity generates that projected tax rate. And you can see there's a couple different philosophies. You either go for it all, so you have all the money up front and you use it over years, so you don't have to go back to the taxpayers, or you you pace it, you, you only get what you need. Maybe in five years you go for another geo bond. That's a very common practice across the state of California. Uh, districts, you'll see some districts go for geo bonds every five, well, every four to six years because you can only do it in the even year elections. Uh, the ingredients, phasing and timing of the bond draws. Again, this is really how quickly do you get the money once the voters approve it. You'll see right there on the bottom, typically, um, you'll see over a 10 year period, you'll draw the bonds in, in every three years. So you can't do everything at once. Um, if we had $200 million worth of projects to do, we'd probably work on the first 50 million, then the next 50 million and space that over time. Uh, projected tax rate, again, you really match your tax rate to the polling results. That's where that polling consultant comes in to get the pulse of the community and what they might support and how much they might support. Again, <clears throat> and AB 195 requires that tax rate information to be explicitly clear in the ballot question that the voters would see on their ballot. So there's there's no question about how much um, the, the, the tax levy would be. The length of bond, bonds are typically 30 year repayments. You may remember uh, Measure S, um, Apple Valley Unified passed that in 2004. Um, 30 years would take that to 2034. We have actually done some bond refinancing over the years. That term was shortened. And I believe we current that the current term of that bond is till 2028. So we just have a few more years on that particular bond. Um, shorter term bonds sometimes for equipment needs, um, five to 10 year bond programs, um, typically not the best use of bond funds. There's other financing mechanisms for equipment that has a short lifespan. Geo bonds are primarily designed for facility capital improvements, long lifespan items. And again, the assessed value of the district really impacts the amount we can get. Um, and that's based on um, not market value of our homes and property in Apple Valley, but assessed value. So again, just to remind the board, they did approve the resolution. So really what I'm looking for is an affirmation from our current board to continue this process. You'll notice in the board agenda, the next two items in the discussion action section are for a polling consultant agreement and a communication specialist agreement. Those will be general fund expenditures. We cannot use facility funds to pay these consultants at this point. <clears throat> Speaking of the, well, the master plan, we've, I've addressed that before. Uh, the public opinion research and survey would start right away and would really go until July. Um, doing some surveys, gathering that data, and then bringing that data to the board to make a decision whether to go for a GO bond or not.
project priorities, bond size, support of the community. And I mentioned concurrent bond programs because you can actually run two distinct bonds on the same ballot. And each bond is considered separate. So you have the ability to access the full tax rate on both bonds. It's an interesting concept, not very common in California. Some districts have, have done that in recent years. And I think that's something that would be appropriate for us to at least explore through our polling process. And again, a communication consultant, they help us spread the word. At the beginning part of any bond campaign, uh, throughout the polling process and educating the community as to what our needs are, the district can share all kinds of factual information with our community and our voters. Once the board takes action on the resolution to call for the election, the district has to step back. We cannot campaign. We cannot use any district funds to campaign. The communication consultant contract would then end with the district and then roll over to a local political action committee to assist in the campaign, funded not by district funds. So again, <clears throat> the last step in the process, August 9th is the deadline for any call for an election for November 2024. Our board meeting is on, is on August 8th. Um, all the consultants I have spoke to during this process recommend not waiting that long as a board. In fact, the recommendations really were to hold a workshop in June where the board would have the ability to review all of the survey data, <clears throat> the communications, the, the pulse of the community, and then uh, consultants recommended a July meeting, middle to end of July, to actually consider the resolution that would be drafted by our bond council. And that resolution, it, it, it can be a very long resolution. I've seen nine page, I've seen 15 page resolutions related to these geo bonds that talk about the different kinds of projects. Um, and again, with a five member board, a minimum of four affirmative votes on that resolution would be required. Um, and again, we're targeting November, 2024. <clears throat> so again, um, affirming, I would just, I would recommend to the board to reaffirm, to continue with this process, um, specifically to move forward with a polling consultant and a communications consultant. Um, that would be my recommendation. Of course, the board at this point, understanding, uh, could also discontinue this process um, if we're not interested in pursuing it um, or anything else you'd like to do. What's the cost on the consultant? Um, I believe the polling consultant is just shy of $30,000. And the communications consultant is on a monthly retainer of $8,000 a month. And how's that paid again? That will be paid through uh, general fund monies. We cannot use facility monies at this point to pay for those consultants. Thank you. Certainly. So my recommendation would be to uh, reaffirm continuing with this process to at least explore the feasibility. Any discussion? <clears throat> any discussion? Any other discussion? I'm finished, Ms. Okpara, okay. unless anybody has some questions I can uh, I can address. I just it's just that we just have too much come coming at us at the same on the same day. And so um, I'm I'm a bit um, it's just a lot coming up at the same time. So Hopefully, um, the next time we have a board meeting, we can spread these things out so that we are not all on the same same board meeting uh, because now our brains are going with all kinds of agenda items that is coming and we can't, um, I cannot make an informed decision because that's just too much information at the same time. So I don't know what, um, I think we need to um, either vote on it or, or table it for when we are more clear-headed on what is what is required here. Well, I, I wouldn't be opposed to a survey done of the community mm -hmm. just to know yay or nay, hey, do we want to move forward with this? I mean, bonds are very hard to pass. People are taxed to death in this country. They're taxed to death on property taxes. So, you know, the odds of it getting 55%, in my opinion, in Apple Valley, I mean, we've seen how difficult bonds have been in the past. 
some have been successful, some have not. But uh, I mean, at least give it a shot to see uh, where we're at. Yeah, I mean, we've been discussing this for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can make a decision based upon. Uh, I, I don't think we need to hire a public relations, but we could at least start with, you know, the doing the polling. Hey, if, if this were to be on the ballot, would you support it? And if it's an overwhelmingly no, then we just drop it at that point. Well, that would that would be certainly one option, Mr. Raleigh. I, I would caution with uh, typically in a bond process, you will see the pollster and the communication consultant work hand in hand um, during the polling process. Um, yeah. That's typical. Um, um, it's not the only way it can be done, but um, my recommendation. No, that's fine. I mean, if that's if that's what the recommendation is, but yeah. I think that if we're going to move <clears> forward, <throat> we need to make a decision, like you said, by August for sure, or July. We, we are in somewhat of a time crunch right. when it comes yeah. to polling Just, the community. So can we in this at particular. least uh, I know, uh, plan on making a decision by June. Um, that way we can have more information and the, we have to the make system. the decision sooner than that though like we would have to m make the decision to send the consultant and the communication consultant out now so that they can bring us their results back like in June so we can review the data and make that decision in July so it goes forward for August. Okay. We'll make Is that motion. correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, the, the the recommendation I would have is to move forward with a consultant, both the polling consultant and the communication consultant, begin that process as soon as possible. Uh, gather the board together in June to review the survey data that we've collected. Um, so we'll get the info by June. So if yeah, we want, absolutely. yeah, if we okay. want to uh, have that info, okay. we would have to yeah. move forward tonight. Yeah. Well, in that case, we should just make a decision to have uh, the consultants begin the process so that we can tell the co mm -hmm. consultants that we need, it, need need the information by June. That's the plan. That's, okay. yeah. So, so you would be, you, you've got three items here. Right. They're all separate, but they are, Matt just presented on all of them. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, so all motion. we've opened so far is nine, right? And nine includes providing direction. So in your guys' um, motion and prior to voting, um, the direction will need to state whether we are moving forward or whether we are stopping at this point so I can have that officially right. in there. I think we need to move forward. Um, that's that's where my mind is going. We need to move forward and then actually- uh, And that was the and motion. And then authorize uh, the- well, All we're doing is authorizing a polling to yeah. see if, if we're gonna move forward. We've just opened the motion to move forward. Is so, that what we've done so far? Is that Maria? Yeah. 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 Okay. Who's seconding? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Review Thank and you. approve. I'm on number 10. Yep. Review and approve the general obligation bond polling consultant agreement. I need a motion. So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? Okay. We go ahead like we planned on the other Should one. Should we vote? Um, we vote I need on. a vote. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Review and approve number 11. A review and approve the general obligation bond communication strategies consultants agreement. Um, and I make a motion. I'll Re second. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Jay, it is recommended that the Board of Trustees consider approving a number of agenda items as a cons consent list. Consent items are routine in nature and can be enacted in one motion without further discussion. This procedure conserves meeting time for a full discussion of significant, significant issues. Consent items can be approved in one motion, one through 41. I'd like to discuss a couple. And I need a motion. I would like to pull pull a couple items. Okay. Which numbers? What numbers? I would like to pull, and hopefully I get them all. 11, 12, 14, 15, and 18. Okay. Any other person? No, okay. I don't know the people. OK. Um, I need a motion to approve item 1 to, one to 10. 
16, 17, and 19 to 41. I mark the motion to approve those items. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, all right, let's discuss yours. Okay. I wrote them all, circled them too. You didn't pull 13, is that correct? No, I did so not pull it's, 13. We didn't. Yeah, 13. yeah, so we want to add 13. To okay. That. okay. We'll talk about Sorry. 13. Yeah. Just for fun. All right. Discussion. Okay. So for 11, 12, 14, 15, and 18, I just wanted it to be transparent for the public that um, these are all related to speech and language therapists or um, services, but we are not hiring every single one of these. We're not ratifying every single one of these. We are just approving them so that if the district is able to um, fill, we have these ready to go and we can ratify them as they become available so that we don't miss out on hiring quality staff. Um, but that we are not hiring necessarily all five of these positions. So it doesn't look like we are right. spending a ton of tax dollars. Our goal that. always is not to have a ratification on here if we don't have to. So in order right. not to ratify, we put them on and we won't lose out. We have every right. time we have to wait to come to a board meeting to bring one forward. We, we have lost several that way. So right. we've opened with multiple companies, um, and that way. Um, if we can hire one or we two, will get the best. Yep. Okay. There you go. I just wanted to be clear. Absolutely. And then on thirteen, that was just accidentally. Got it. This out. Got caught up in the net with my other ones. So okay, that was it. Okay. Now I need a motion to approve items eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. No, 13 is Throw normal. 13 in there, too, because it got pulled with the other one. We put it back. We did put it back. Did we not put it back? Yeah. I think yeah, we, we did. did put I, it back. So items 11, 12, 14, 15, and 18. I need a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, consent. I we need to, we don't need to go to closed session. Um, but if, if nothing to report, we don't have anything to report. Out. Any future, any items. future items? Do any members of the board have any future items? Not you. Not yeah, I just want the, the item on the special ed issue to be brought back to us. Does it need to be to the board or just um, as a report back? How would you like it? Because um, I, I like can send it earlier through um, email to you. If you report back to us, the, it was brought up in public, so the public would probably want to hear it too. That's fine. There being no further business to come before the Board of Trustees, it's recommended that the meeting be adjourned. I need a motion. So moved. All in favor. Uh, sec who sec I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Put the diehards out there. <laughs> <laughs>